The golem is the guardian of the forest. It exists to patrol the woods and ensure its continued survival. Day and night, it observes plants, animals, and any other life that may exist among these trees. It does not interfere with the natural food chain. It simply oversees nature in its own dispensation. The forest is a diverse place where life flourishes and is nurtured before, in time, returning to the earth from where it first emerged. The forest has laws that must be obeyed. I will spend a thousand years enforcing these laws, and when my time comes, I will also return to the earth. I never doubted for even one minute that this was the purpose of my existence, until one day, everything changed. Understood. Why was a human child out here? Uh, fa father. This being referred to me as its father. Appreciate your help. There you are, Somali. What? Hi, Father. <laughs> you were told to remain within sight. Did you forget? I was chasing a butterfly, but it got away from me, and then I almost caught a bunny. We must not be separated while traveling. You must always remain within my line of sight. Hmm. Okay, I will, but not all the time. <laughs> Where are you, Bunny? Wow! Look at that, Father! A city! Can we go visit? <laughs> it was impossible! I said to the best of that any dead You really came through for me. No problem. Thanks, Alba. I really didn't know what to say. I want to play with my friends. Whoa! This is the biggest city we've ever been in! It also appears to be more prosperous than the previous cities we have encountered. Greater prosperity brings greater dangers. We must exercise caution. Cat! Hey, kitty! Wake up! Somali. Silly cat. Know what, father? I'm really hungry. Here you go, young lady. I hope you have huh? a big appetite. Oh. Today's special rice stuffed lantern fish. <laughs> this dish contains all required nutrients. Consume it in its entirety. How is it? Great! You have some, Father. Unnecessary. Golems only require oxygen, sunlight, and water to function. Hmm? Did you say golems? Excuse me, sir, are you a golem? Yes, I am. That's pretty unusual. Never seen one before. Almost nobody has around here. From what I understood, I thought you folks never left your forests. And you have a kid with you as well. What species is she? She is of the Minotaur race. 
Oh, of course. I should have noticed those cute little horns on her. And what is it that brings you two travelers to our fine town? We are searching for humans. Excuse me? We have personal business which requires us to interact with the species. Hmm. Have you guys seen any humans lately? Now that you mention it, I think they had some in the market not too long ago. I remember that. They made for good eating, didn't they? I wouldn't mind having another one for dinner. Sure would, but I just can't recall what happened to all of them. Allow me. I happen to remember this story quite clearly. Long, long ago, humans lived in lands so distant from ours that we were unaware of each other's existence. But then a lone human stumbled upon one of our villages, and that was what caused our peoples to finally meet. At first, there was astonishment from both sides, yet gradually we started to know each other and intermingle. But then the humans started saying the strangest things to us. They called us grotesque. They demanded to know why we all looked so different. Why do some of you have so many eyes, they asked. Why do you have scales like snakes do? They even called us monstrous. We didn't know what to make of them. Why were they so difficult to please? They were physically weak, yet judgmental, stubborn, and quick to anger. Eventually, we began to quarrel. Before long, a great war broke out. But the humans were no match for us. They were so weak that they were defeated in a flash. Before we knew it, all of the humans were gone. And that is the end of the story. Without the humans around, we were finally able to achieve a peaceful world. That's how it happened, all right. We used to hunt them all down, rooting out pockets of survivors. That's right. Kept them in cages and served them for dinner. I can't imagine any of them have survived. I haven't actually seen a live one in years. <sighs> Guess she liked it. Are you done? Yes. Where will the two of you be spending the night? Outside in the open. Huh? Uh, are you sure you want to do that? It's not safe. And besides, you've got a kid with you. You should get a room here in town. I know an inn that would be perfect. I assure you, that will not be... That sounds good. Can we stay at an inn, Father? Please, can we stay? Yes! We finally have a room! <laughs> oh, this bed is so soft. <laughs> Staying here was not in the plan, but we do what we must. What are you doing under there? Exploring. I find this behavior inexplicable. You know what? I'm really glad we get to stay here tonight. I'm gonna have fun. You are? Of course I am, aren't you? Golems lack emotions. Uh, I need help, Father. I'm stuck. Uh... A damaged costume will make our journey dangerous. Can you fix it? Yes, easily. It'll be fine. Father knows how to fix my horns. Father knows how to fix my horns. Father knows how to fix... What is it? Remain quiet and still. Apparently just a lodger. Ugh. <laughs> you were scared, weren't you? Your delight is misplaced. As I have previously explained to you, golems lack the capacity for emotion, so it would be impossible for- I don't for... care what you told me. You got all tense. Truth is, you were afraid. Your statement continues to be erroneous. It's not enormous. You were scared. We start early tomorrow. Commence sleep. No way. I'm staying up. Request denied. Denial denied. better. 
cool, father. Exercise caution in your play, or it may break again. Thanks for fixing it for me. Your gratitude is unnecessary. <clears throat> Where do we get to go today? We must replenish our supplies. We're going shopping! Somali. Huh? Insufficient. The merchant in the last city offered me double that amount. That may be true, but I'm afraid these stones are rather common in this area, sir. I think you'll find this is more than fair. Unacceptable. You must offer appropriate compensation. You're a tough negotiator, but I just can't give you much for these huh? stones. He's pretty. Hmm. You have forced my hand. And sir, please, that's a very precious gemstone you're holding there. <laughs> What's happening here? This is an amorphous substance comprised primarily of silicate. The coloring has been created through artificial means. It is essentially worthless. What? Not true. You're mistaken. A golem's eye can identify the structural makeup of anything. The gold contained in these accessories is impure. It is an alloy of 78% low-grade copper and 2% gold pigment. It is designed to mislead the consumer. Most of these gemstones are glass, and the remainder are of very poor quality. The conclusion is undeniable. 80% of the goods in this shop are counterfeit. Sir, you can surely guess what I intend to do now. Fine, here's your money. Acceptable. Just take it and get out of my place. That is my intention. It is time to go, Somali. Gone again.
Hello? Kitty? Come on, where'd you go? Father, can you help me? Hello, little girl. Ah! What was that? Looking for me? Huh? Kitty? You don't look so good, kid. Did you trick me? Not really. I figured you'd give up after a while, but you were persistent. You followed me all the way here. I figured I'd better stop before you got any more lost than you are. Hey, I'm not lost. I just have no idea where I am. That's the definition of being lost. What are you doing? Calm down a little bit and let me pet you. Absolutely no petting! Why are you wandering around out here anyway? This is no place for a kid all alone. Hmm? Huh? I can't put my paw on it, but there's something familiar about your smell. I don't know how to tell you this, but you remind me... Of giblets and gravy. Something utterly delicious. Hey! Go find your own meal! Leave this place immediately. <laughs> what is the matter? Nothing. I'm just happy. Why? Because you're always watching out for me. We will now return to the inn. Okay. How's everything going? I was doing fine until I ran into this golem with a kid earlier and he scared me half to death. I bet you were stalking that kid, weren't you? Absolutely not! It's just that I thought she smelled kind of interesting is all, but it never got beyond that. Ha! <laughs> I know you. When you say interesting, you really mean scrumptious. I never said anything of the sort! That's so disgusting. All I did was smell the kid! It is fortunate I was able to arrive in time. You would have been in danger if that cat had realized you were human. It is apparent to me now that children have a tendency to act spontaneously in the presence of things that spark their curiosity. Hey, Father? Yes? When you went looking for me, how did you know where I was? Observation of your behavior. Observation? It means I have been noticing how you behave. I have seen that you tend to leave my side when something catches your attention. I am incapable of understanding emotion, but I am capable of observation. This is my first experience with a human child, so completing this analysis required some time. All right. The prospect of having you get lost everywhere we go is unacceptable. Therefore, you are now forbidden from leaving my side without permission. I have to stay with you except sometimes. I think you are missing the point here, so I am left with no choice. Hmm? Take my hand. Huh? This is a behavior I learned through observation of the city's residents. The act of holding hands prohibits spontaneous, independent activity. You're sure? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Hold it like this? Only one hand is required. You mean... Like this? Yes. Time to go. All right! Oh, look, Father, a butterfly! Look. This works quite well. It is an effective inhibitor of spontaneous independent pursuits. However, it has one major drawback. It limits my activity as well as yours. It may be necessary to find a more efficient method of control. But, Father, I really like holding hands. Is that right? Mm-hmm.
Somali, you are awake. <sighs> Is it still night? No. It is simple. Striking star maker rocks together creates fire. Oh, I want to try it. Unacceptable. You are too young. We will gather plants at the riverside until the flame has stabilized. Mm, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, tummy! You need to exercise caution during consumption. Mm, can't exercise. Tastes too good. Mm. A difficult concept for one who lacks a sense of taste. Huh? What is the matter? That's the most terriblest thing! You can't enjoy food? Doesn't that just make you sad every day? Your statement is an overreaction. They are horned rabbits, likely drawn here by the smell of the fish you are cooking. Hey, come over. Come on. We will do you no harm. You are invited to join us. <sighs> this one is so warm and sweet and fluffy. Forgive the inquiry, but is there a city within this region? I see. Just outside this forest? Understood. Thank you. Wow, Father! You can really talk with the animals? That is correct, Somali. Communicating with animals in order to maintain balance in the forest is an ability unique to guardians. Wow! That's a pretty amazing talent! Hmm? Ah! That's my honey mushroom! Drop it, you thief! Somali, you didn't ask it is dangerous to run on such uneven you. ground. Ah! Have you suffered any physical damage, Somali? Father... What is it? I'm not like an object or something. Then I will rephrase. Were you injured? Nope. Hmm. <gasps> this wound is more severe than it first appeared. And our medical supplies are depleted. Father? Hmm? It hurts. It's beginning to hurt all of a sudden. Medicine! You could use some help, I think. Maybe some medicine? You passed by earlier. You are a member of the Oni clan, correct? Oh, phooey. Here I thought nobody saw me. I'm the dwarf Oni Shizuno. This is very unusual. We don't see many golems. That must really hurt, right? What have I got? Oh wait, of course, I know. This should do it. What is that? A liquid ointment. It's very strong. Just leave this to me. I'm a healer. It's my responsibility to make medicines from nature for my clan. Now this is gonna sting a little. Can you be strong for me? Mm-hmm. Here we go. One, two, three. Mm. Mm. So, are you some kind of minotaur? Yes. A golem father with a minotaur child. What a funny combination that is. There! My first aid is complete! Though I'd like to give it more care than I can provide out here. Why don't we finish up at my house? That would be very appreciated. And while we're there, maybe you can help me out. I'm dying to get a closer look at how your body's constructed. Please, please, please! Well, here we are. That's my house right over there. You live here in the forest. 
Is there no town located nearby? There is, but it was hard going into the forest every time I needed herbs. So I decided to just move out here. I'm back. Hello. She's an owl! <laughs> you ran out of the house without cleaning up again. I'm, I'm blind. I Is this a fruit of some kind? What a rude thing to do, Yabashira. How could you go and throw things at customers? She's an owl! There, all done. Try standing on it now, Somali. Guess what, Father? The leg doesn't hurt at all anymore. Thanks so much. You're an amazing fixer-upper. <laughs> you have just been healed by the magic of my wondrous ointments, courtesy of the great Shizuno. <laughs> Look, I can jump up and down Be on cautious, it. Be cautious, Somali. You do not want to re-injure yourself. Look at that. You kids have so much energy. Huh? Wait, Shizuno, aren't you a kid too? Dwarf Oni remains small, even when fully grown. He's exactly right. We may not be as physically strong as normal Oni, but for solving problems, we're much better at using our heads. Oh, huh? Something smells good. <laughs> Sorry about what happened before. I'm Shizuno's assistant, Yabashira. I know it's not much of an apology, but would you like some cake? Apology accepted! It appears to be delicious. Yabashira has always been a wizard when it comes to sweets. Are you the one that made all these amazing goodies? Surprising, huh? I don't look the type. It's so good! You should sell your sweets at the bazaar! You could call yourself the Magician of the Kitchen! That's very nice of you. Your tasks must not leave you enough time to organize the household. Things pile up pretty quickly, and Shizuno won't lift a finger. He ran off earlier today without cleaning again, and that's why I lost my temper. Hey, you're my assistant. You should be doing all that. An assistant is not the same thing as a maid. My job is clear. I'm supposed to be assisting you in your work. The fact is, making medicines is about the only thing you're good at. I can do plenty of other things. Shizuno. Hmm? Hmm? Your knowledge is useful. Would you instruct me in the art of making medicines? The ability to create remedies, even when our supplies are exhausted, would be invaluable in emergencies. Hmm, sure, I'd be happy to. But I'd like something in exchange. Could you perhaps give me a piece of you before you go? Huh? A piece of me? Yes. I'd like to learn about golem bodies. It would help advance my knowledge in studying medicine. Stop it! <laughs> How can you sit there and talk about stuff like that? You're scaring the little girl to death! Hey, I'm sorry, I was just joking. You understand, right? Sure, I love jokes. Um... Oh. Huh? Hmm? Huh? Is this acceptable? Well, sure. Thanks. But, Father, doesn't it hurt when you do that? The question is not a relevant one. Golems feel no physical pain. Hmm. Are you sure you can handle that big basket? Yes, I like helping. It's fun. Is that right? I don't suppose you'd want to help me with the drying, then. I want to be able to do it all, yes! I don't know. Are you sure you can handle it? Just try me! I'm gonna go get a chair. <laughs> all right, then. If we're all ready, Shizuno's special medicine class will now come to order! As you command. Let me ask, are you familiar with Hypericum erectum? It is a grass seen frequently on our journeys. Yes, but you'll find it's much more than that. It's a basic herb you'll need when making my ointment. So to begin, you wash it all really well, and then cut it up into small pieces. Next, a full cup of water. Pour it right on the leaves you prepared in the bowl. Boil it for 20 minutes over a fire. When it's done, take it off, let it cool, and it's finished! Then you just smear that concoction on the wound. 
If you're in a big hurry, you can also use the juice by squeezing the leaves into a bowl. Understood. Will you now teach me the preparation of cold medicine? Oh, you'll be needing Puerraria for that. It's a kind of kudzu that contains very powerful antioxidant properties. First, you peel off the skin. Uh-oh. Allow me. Thank you so much. Most times, I'm not so good at the detail work. I see. Now, once it's peeled, you'll want to chop it very fine and let it dry out in the sun. In the sun? But that will take some time. Luckily for us, I have some dried ones that I already made right here. We'll need to boil these too, but that shouldn't... Now, where did my measuring cup go? Mm. Well, it appears I'll just have to guesstimate. Is this method not overly reckless? It's fine. It's not an exact science. All is now explained. I see how Yabashira's workload can become so heavy. <laughs> uh... Yabashira! Huh? I got all the laundry dried! Great! You'll be the official assistant to the assistant. What do I do next? Huh? This is fun. What can I do to help you some more? Hey, slow down. Don't push so hard. You're gonna wear yourself out. You should go off and play while you have the chance. I don't want to. Huh? Why not? Because of my father. He's always doing stuff for me. He makes food. He builds a fire. I want to help with things because I think he might be getting sick. If I work hard, maybe I can help him get better. <laughs> Sounds like you love him a lot, don't you? <laughs> Okay, then, let's find some more things for you to help with. All right! Golem, tell me again why it's so important that you learn to make medicine? As I explained earlier, it is more efficient if I can do it myself. And you wear a lot of clothes. The hood, the boots, all the cloth wrappings and the vest. I've been thinking about it. I believe you're trying to keep more of your skin from breaking off. This piece, it's not something you can afford to lose, is it? And I went and asked for it. At this moment, you resemble Somali. Huh? When Somali was hurt in the forest earlier, she exhibited the same expression I now see on your face. The facial muscles were distorted, and moisture filled her eyes. Somehow, that expression was able to disrupt my thoughts. In particular, this part of my body became agitated. I want to ensure that I will never see that expression on Somali's face again. That is the reason I must learn to make medicine. A portion of my skin is a price I am willing to pay. You do not need to concern yourself further. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> what is the matter? Have I said something that amuses you? Well, from what you described, I think you suffered a little heartbreak. Your assertion is erroneous. Golems have no emotions, and therefore, no hearts that can be broken. Maybe, but you didn't like seeing Somali cry, right? You put up a tough front, but you're actually a very caring golem when you get right down to it. Your interpretation is mistaken. Father! Yabashira's making treats for us! Guess what? I helped! I did the cleaning and the dishes and the laundry! I see. After that, I wiped the table. Hmm. And after that, I watered the flowers, too. Cake. More cake. So yummy. I love frosting. 
<laughs> you have my gratitude for offering her a bed. Really? It was our pleasure. That little girl is very motivated. I'm not surprised she's tired after today. <laughs> she was half asleep the whole time she was eating her dessert. I think she got more cookie on her face than she did in her mouth. She reminded me of you, Shizuno. I never leave any crumbs. I apologize. I have requested in the past that she take greater care when eating. Hey, I'm glad she enjoyed it. It's a testament to my cooking. I'm happy to see her act like a kid. I see. Listen. Hmm? I've been wondering about something. I keep going over it in my head, but it's still confusing. Why would a golem leave the forest and go on a journey like this with a small child? That's right. I've been kind of wondering about that. I am in the process of searching for Somali's parents. When I eventually find them, I shall return her to them. Now I get it. It makes perfect sense. But where exactly do you think her parents are? I do not know. Oh. Well, if you have no idea, how do you ever expect to find them? I guess Somali hasn't been much help so far, has she? And since she's still a little kid, you can't really press her too hard for information. There's something else going on here, isn't there? A reason why you're in such a hurry? What's happening? Your body, it's starting to deteriorate. Do you know the lifespan of a golem? I read somewhere that they live a long time, but no, not really. We live for precisely 1,000 years, and our lives end at the moment that time period has concluded. How old are you? So far, I have lived for a total of 998 years, 253 days. That means my life functions will cease in one year and 112 days. Before that time comes, I am compelled to return Somali to her real parents. She will need someone to raise and protect her. Does Somali know the truth yet? That you're reaching the end of your life? No. I can understand why. So you're going on this journey just to say goodbye. That's a pretty sad ending when you think about it. Your relationship is like a parent and child. She seems pretty content with that. Content, you say? Is that how Somali feels? You're not a very observant soul. We could both see how she felt about you from across the room. go, my friend. This should hold you for a while. You have my gratitude. And this present is for my dear little helper. What's in there? <laughs> oh, these are sweets. Thanks, Yabashira. You're welcome. Thank you for the help yesterday. They smell so good, I want to eat some now. Refrain from overindulgence. <sighs> well, if you should happen to run out, you'll always be able to get some more from your father. <gasps> Unbelievable! You know how to make these? I will adapt. Come on, you're supposed to promise to make them later. Just you wait and see. I'm gonna do a whole lot of helping now. I'll even wash your clothes for you next time. I see. <laughs> It seems to me he's quite an unusual golem. Yeah, he has a good heart. I hope they both have a successful journey. Oh, I'm sure they will. I believe he still has a few secrets up his sleeve. Hmm? Oh, nothing. I hope we'll meet them again someday. That mysterious father and child.
tell you what, then. How about 20? It's a good price. That's the best you can do. I guess I can give you a ride. Why, thank you. Whoa! <laughs> that was really good! But my tummy says I'm still hungry. Oh! I know what. Hmm? <sighs> what are you doing with the pouch, Somali? Smelling Yabashira sweets? They're gone now, but it's almost like eating them again. <sighs> I fail to comprehend. How can just an aroma quench the appetite? Somali, we must start heading to the next town. Unfortunately, it is a significant distance away. What do you think, Father? Can we ride there? No. It is true that a carriage would make the trip more comfortable, but our travel funds are limited. We cannot afford to pay for the convenience. Hey, it's all right with me. Let's walk. We're not in a big hurry. I really like walking with you, Father. So far, I have lived for a total of 998 years, 253 days. That means my life functions will cease in one year and 112 days. Before that time comes, I am compelled to return Somali to her real parents. So, what should we do? Here, let us walk. All right! No. I said I wanted to walk with you, Father, but I'm really tired. My legs are starting to hurt, and I don't know if I can go much farther. We are nearly there. See? and feast your eyes on the many delights of our shopping district. You have entered the main thoroughfare where anything can be found and everyone is welcome. Enjoy the diverse wonders of Ant Hole City. Come and taste the best wine in town. No matter the damage, I can mend it. Try my seaweed grilled sticky sweet potatoes. They're fresh out of the oven and ready to eat. The marketplace here in Ant Hole City is clearly a popular destination for travelers to visit before they cross the desert. Why is it called Ant Hole City? They decided on that name because the streets here are laid out in a configuration similar to an ant colony. If one got lost in this town, one could easily remain lost forever. <laughs> Do you understand what I have told you? Welcome to my shop, sir. I both buy and sell goods, so what do you need? I wish to sell something. Huh? All right, then. Show me your wares. <laughs> Let's see now. You have Hypericum Arecum, honey mushrooms. <gasps> the lights are all floaty. I want to see them. <laughs> hey. Huh? Why are you here? You need to leave this place now. <laughs> what is the matter? Nothing. How about this? It's a fair price. It is a smaller amount than I expected. <laughs> Sorry, but these particular items aren't really in demand. The city is a surplus of them right now, and it's driven the price down. Are you trying to make money in a hurry? Yes. We wish to resume our journey as soon as possible. Hmm? Well, in that case, you might have more success picking up an odd job here and there. This city has a lot of restaurants in it, and it seems they're always understaffed. Despite financial concerns, we must deal with the issue of your empty stomach immediately. Do we have enough money? Enough to purchase a meal. Is this location acceptable? Yeah! They appear to be closed. Hmm? Oh, look, Father. What is it? The box over there is moving. It appears someone is hiding inside. Really? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I was just going out for a walk. Huh? Wait, who are you? I'm Somali. My apologies, sir. We're not quite ready to open for the day. Huh? Kikula! <laughs> what are you doing? I can't help it. You look so fluffy. <laughs> cuddle, 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 cuddle. I'm sorry about all the fuss just now. No, the fault is entirely ours. Think nothing of it. My son and I are Wooly Shurigara. I'm Koki Lila, and this little escape artist here is... Sorry I got caught. I was just ten feet from getting away, too. Enough, Kikila. Getting away? My wife hurt her back recently, so my son is supposed to help with the chores, but as you witnessed, he'd rather be doing anything else. He can't stay put. <laughs> I find that to be a common tendency in children. <laughs> Kids his age should be out playing, and I'd like to let him go. But I need the help, and I can't find anyone to hire. Do you require workers? If that is the case... Oh, you look really cool, Father! Very nice. Huh? That outfit looks like it was made just for you. <laughs> hey, you're supposed to be taking it easy. This is my wife, Gina. We really appreciate having you here. If you have any trouble with anything, just let us know. Understood. Somali, you must remain inside the restaurant until my work for the day is completed. I hear you, Father. Hey, does that mean I can go play? Yes, but I want you to play with Somali. Yeah! Come with me. Uh, I've got some great toys. Well... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now then, let me explain what you'll be doing. Look at that, it's sucking up the color. It's pretty cool. What type of games do you like to play, Somali? All types. The bestest is when I get to explore. Or cuddle with animals. <laughs> but my most favorite thing of all is when I get to play with my father. <sighs> Yeah, I like playing with my father, too. Sometimes we just go out and kick a ball back and forth. The thing I really like is when my father picks me up and runs super fast down the road. <laughs> what kind of game is that? And we play hide and seek, too. One time I found him hiding at the top of a really tall tree. I don't think that's hide and seek. But I have to say it's been kind of boring lately. We haven't played any fun games in a while. That's too bad. I'll tell you what, I'll show you some new games. I know what you're doing. It's called drawing. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> long, long, so long ago, very far from home. Stranger from a land so far came here all alone. Across the sea he traveled on Blazing a new trail. First person he saw up then had horns and a tail. What a neat song that is. You've never heard it? It's a really old tune. Everyone knows it. You know, it's almost like it's about us, isn't it? Think about it. I have horns and a tail, and you're a visitor from somewhere else. Yeah, you're right about that. I know! But what about cuddles? Is there anything in the song about cuddles? No way! Nobody gets cuddled. I must say, they seem to have bonded very quickly. <laughs> it does appear that way. <laughs> Interesting. I hadn't heard that before. I have your order, sir. <gasps> How can you balance all those dishes? Hey, be careful with those plates! There is no need for concern. I have carefully assessed the weight and angle of the dishes I am carrying. <laughs> in that case, maybe the performance will draw in customers. You have ordered green eggs over rice and corn salad with herbs. <laughs> Total calories, 595. Of that, 20.94 grams are protein, 16.31 grams are fat, and in addition... Ah, you really don't need to tell them all of that stuff! Understood. <laughs> I've seen a lot of things in my travels, but having a golem waiter is a first. What has brought you here, if I may ask? I am on a journey, searching for humans. Really? To eat? No. Wait, if I recall, there was a traveler we met who mentioned seeing humans, wasn't there? Yes, that's right. He thought he saw them on the west end of the Osuna Desert. Hmm. 
From my experience, crossing that desert is no easy task. Yes, it's brutal. The desert, you say? Thank you very much for the information. Your father is amazing, Sumali. It looks like he can do anything. <laughs> Truthfully, I, I wish he could stay and work with us at the restaurant forever. If that happened, then you'd be here too and we could always play together. Hmm? Really? You think he'll come back here when your journey is over? Because huh? I think when it's over, you're just gonna go home. Which might be good for you, but it stinks for me. Huh? Wait a minute. When our journey is over? If you're gonna cross through the desert with a child, at the bare minimum, you're gonna need at least this much equipment. I believe you, but I lack the funds to purchase most of this. Here is your order, sir. Gliding lizard in cream. Thank you. We hope to see you again. Hey, waiter! Water, please! I will bring it to you immediately. That golem turns out to be the best employee we've ever had. You're right, dear. He deserves at least twice what we're paying him. Here is your order, sir. Uh, hmm. Hi, Father. Can I talk to you? I am working right now. We will talk later. Huh? Hey, Somali. Come on. Let's play outside today. Father said I'm not supposed to go outside. Shh. That's why we're not gonna tell him. Uh, uh. Where are you going? We, we were gonna play outside. That is not permitted. You must stay in the restaurant. Why? What's the big deal? That was the agreement. Somali, do you understand? Huh? Mm-hmm. This stinks. What's your father's problem? He's way too strict with you. Your order, sir. It's your turn, Somali. Hmm? Somali. Kikila! Huh? Can you and Somali pick up some things for me at the store? Sure, Dad. Come on, Somali. Wait a moment. Somali is not permitted to go. I cannot allow her to leave my direct supervision. But I'll be with her, and I promise you, I'll watch over her. I'll protect her from trouble. So please, let her come along. <sighs> Very well. You have my permission to go. <gasps> hey, isn't that great, Somali? Make sure you return before nightfall. I will. Wow. You worry about her a lot, huh? I apologize for assuming she could go. No. You see... Somali and I have only had each other during our journey. Kikila is the first friend she has made, her only relationship with a child her own age. I see. Here you go. Thank you. And I put in your usual special treat. Hooray! <laughs> you be careful on your way home now. 
Here, try this. It's a baked apopo. The shopkeeper always gives me one. Okay. Um, mm, mm. It's good. I know, right? They're so good. I can't get enough of them. Somali! <laughs> what is it? What's wrong? I think my father wants to leave me and he's too busy to talk about it. What? That's why he's working so hard. He needs to get money so we can finish our journey. And when it's all over, I think he's going to leave me and I'll never be able to see him again. It's not fair because I just want to stay with him forever and ever. <laughs> I know what to do. We'll go and find some Yozume flowers. They can help. There's a legend in the city that there are flowers growing underground. If you can find one and bring it back alive to the surface, it'll grant you a wish. Aren't you sure about that? Yeah! Let's go down there and grab one. Kikila, you are so nice to me. Huh? <laughs> Stop it, Molly. What are you doing? This is how I say thanks with cuddles. <laughs> cuddles, Stop. cuddles, cuddles, You're cuddles, cuddles, cuddles. Me. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> The rules say that kids aren't supposed to come down here unless a grown-up is with them. But there are lots of entrances around the city, and most of the kids know where they are. So we come down to play here in secret. I don't get it. Why do they say you need a grown-up with you? This is why. This world is nothing like the world above us. It belongs to the underground creatures. the first day I came to your town. <laughs> Want to see more? Yeah. It's really bright for being underground. That's the glow from the mushroom spores. They use the light to lure in bugs so they can eat them. Wow, the mushrooms really eat bugs? <laughs> you bet. something, Somali. I don't understand why you're with Mr. Golem. I've been trying to figure it out, but it's really confusing to me. You call him father, but he's obviously not from the same species as you, so how can he really be your father? He is my father. There's no reason to call him something else. When I'm in danger, he's always there to protect me. When something happens where we might get separated, he holds my hand. When I can't sleep at night, he comes over and counts stars with me. He's there every single time I need him. And so, that means the only thing he could be is my father. Okay, then. Look! It's a swarm of starry butterflies! Huh? Let's go after them! The starry butterflies feed on the pollen of the Yozume flower. So if we follow them, we're sure to find what we're looking for. Huh? Uh, uh, Somali! Wait for me! <laughs> Look there! A whole field of Yozume flowers! All right, let's find the biggest one! <laughs> There's a really big one! Please, Yozume, let me stay with my father forever. Now I wait for my wish to come true. <gasps> Somali, get away from there!
Damn, what a waste of my time. Huh? <laughs> I've been searching all over for you. I'm in trouble, Father. So, Molly. Your order is noted. I've got one fresh mushroom paspata going to table six. Hey there, waiter. I could use a menu. Yeah, me too. Understood. I will attend to you shortly. One moment, Mr. Golem. Looks like you forgot the side salad. You're worried, aren't you? Don't give in to it. Those kids are very smart and resourceful. They're gonna be just fine. I shall resume my duties. <sighs> Please, Yozume, let me stay with my father forever. <sighs> now I wait for my wish to come true. <gasps> Somali, get away from there! Damn, what a waste of my time. I've been searching all over for you. Oh, thank goodness, Master Mutrika. You saved us. Huh? You brat. When will you learn not to come down here without an adult? Sorry, I was trying to be careful. What's going on, Kikua? You know this scary guy? What makes you think I'm scary? Ah! <laughs> Don't worry, Somali. Everything's fine. He might look scary, but Master Mutrika is a part of the Suchinoko team. Uh, Suchinoko team? It's an organization that oversees Anthole City's underground region. Usually those who venture down here must do so without protection and guidance. But lately, a lot of our time has been taken up trying to keep determined trespassers like Kila Boy here from slipping in. Oh, so you thought I was sneaking around earlier. <laughs> My overall record is now 26 wins, 22 losses, and 4 draws. Quiet! I've told you this region is not a playground. And now you're involving outsiders in your mischief. <laughs> Sumali, What's happened to your flower? What? Huh? Huh? It's drooping! No surprise. This one isn't gonna make it out of here. It'll be dead by the time you get home. That's terrible. What's going to happen to my wish? Why is it dying so fast? <sighs> Take a look at this. What is it? The roots are glowing! It's from the Tsuchiyami tree. It's what supports the Yozume flowers. They feed off the tree's sap. But the smaller trees provide only minimal nutrition. As a result, the flowers that feed off of them become undernourished, and they don't live for very long. Hmm. So all we have to do is find a bigger Tsuchiyami tree. The flowers that feed off that should live longer, right? I know where to look. Forget it. Huh? The place you're thinking of going is extremely dangerous. It is definitely not a place for children. Come with me, we're going back to the surface. Mm. No way! I've got to try! I'll keep looking until I find it! You're going to remain here on your own? Yeah, that's right. I'll find my way back. I'll pick a good flower and make sure that my wish about father comes true! The underground realm is larger and deeper than the city above it. Not even the Tsuchinoko team has had the opportunity to explore all of it. There's no guarantee you'll be safe. You're still determined to stay. I am. <sighs> Follow me. I'll show you the way. Oh, 
This is cool, isn't it, Somali? Yeah. Come on, you idiots. We're not on a picnic. Huh? Huh? It was some time ago. I was escorting a group of traveling scholars down here. We happened upon a large Tsuchiyami tree. From the size of the roots, it's Yozume. Flowers should be strong enough to survive a trip to the surface, and then some. This is so cool! Muthrika knows everything, doesn't he? I told you, he's my master. Hey, would it be alright if I called you master too? Shut your mouths and keep up. Don't blame me if you fall and get hurt. Yes, yes sir, master. master! Good grief. Babysitting is exhausting. We have to jump across this river? If you can't handle a little water, you'll never be able to reach the flowers. Hmm? <gasps> Somali, wait! <sighs> <sighs> huh? Um, thank you very much. You've got a lot of spirit, don't you? Yeah! You coming or not? Wait, who's gonna give me a hand if I fall in? What a pathetic performance, Keela boy. Stumbling over a little stream like that. I had some trouble, but I still made it across. Yeah, and got your tail soaked. What a shame, all that nice fluff gone to waste. <clears throat> hey, don't take his side! We've arrived. The Tsuchiyami tree is down there. Okay, but what are those big yellow things? I know those! They're branching mushroom spore puffs! Huh? They're soft when you land on them. Uh, Let's go! Hang on, Kikula! <laughs> Ready, jump! Uh, <laughs> 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 than those other flowers. Let's go! <sighs> what a peculiar child she is. I hope this is the right flower. <sighs> hey, you two! Get back here right now! Huh? What'd you say, Master? Provoking it just might put them in more danger. Oh, Kikila. Listen! Please leave us alone! I need this flower! I'm here because I want my wish to come true! Is that so bad? I just want to stay with my father! You two! Are you all right? Yes, Master. That was very brave, Kikila. You did well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kikila. Sure. Why did that monster leave? The Suchi lizards protect the Suchiyami tree, and the Yosume flowers as well. They are the tree's masters and guardians. Perhaps this one sympathized with your desire to stay with your father, which may mean your wish will be granted. <gasps> Kikila, thank you, sir. 
I brought him home, as usual. And we appreciate it. <laughs> Look, Father! This is called a Yosemite flower! You went on an errand and were told to return before nightfall. Huh? Why did you take an unauthorized detour? Wait, it wasn't her fault. It was my idea. You shouldn't... So Molly still made the decision to accompany you. Why did you neglect my instructions? Did you decide to be willfully disobedient? No, Father. I just wanted... If you continue to act this recklessly, I will be unable to travel with you any longer. <sighs> <laughs> Somali! Somali? Uh, Somali? Come on, I know you're in there. Talk to me. Uh, Mr. Golem, I don't mean to intrude, but don't you think it would be a wise thing to hear her out? I mean, she might have had a good reason for doing what she did. No, Somali's fault in this matter is indisputable. She failed to follow my orders. So typical of you golems. You're not willing to listen to anything outside your experience. Can you elaborate? From what I've observed, your kind doesn't believe in superstitions. But there's an old legend in this part of the country. If you can bring one of these Yosame flowers back home before it dies, you can ask it to grant you a single wish. A superstition? Entirely unrealistic. That may be, but Somali believed it. She said she wants to be with you forever. Let me tell you, she was so desperate to have that wish granted, she jumped blindly off a cliff to pick this flower. She was willing to risk everything if it meant it would somehow keep you together. I know this much, Mr. Golem. The best parents in the world never use fear to control their children. Good night. If I didn't mention it before, thank you for your help today, Muthrika. No problem. So, Molly, I'm coming in. <gasps> it's an emergency! You have to come upstairs! <laughs> so, Molly. <gasps> she has a fever. She is three degrees above her standard temperature. Don't we have any medicine? I'd like to help, but the only medicine we have here is for Shirigaras like us. I'm sure she'll feel better if you can get some food into her. Thank you. It is appreciated. <sighs> mm. I'm not hungry. That is irrelevant. You require nutrition to restore your health. Force yourself to eat some of it. I am going to buy medicine. What? At this hour? But the stores will all be closed! The long journey, the growing exhaustion, the psychological trauma. I had endless opportunities to notice the toll it was taking on Somali's small body. And yet, I did not. Oh, <sighs> 
it's the middle of the night. What is it you want? I wish to buy medicine. Huh? What kind of medicine? And for which particular clan? I need something that will work for every clan. What? Well, I do have something like that, but the ingredients are very rare, so it's pretty expensive. Can't you give me some idea of the clan in question? Oh. Will this be sufficient? Take this. It's medicine. Slowly will do. <coughs> there is no need to rush. It is all right. Sip it slowly. Yes. That is acceptable. How's it going? Her symptoms appear to have subsided. That is very good news. She had us all worried. I believe I am the cause of her failing health. Huh? I was so preoccupied with the speed of our journey that I failed to perceive the changes within her. As a result, I caused a great deal of trouble to all of you. Forgive me. I understand what you're going through. Somali's really important to you, right? I mean, anyone can see that. You're very protective and you only want what's best for her. <laughs> but Mr. Golem, you need to know there's no such thing as a perfect parent. I make mistakes of my own from time to time. Sometimes I let my anger get the better of me. Sometimes I leave him bawling his eyes out. But whenever I mess up, I always take him in my arms and tell him I'm sorry. The bottom line is, I make sure my son knows I care about him. It's a simple thing, but it's the secret to how parents and children both grow. It's what the relationship is all about. The relationship between child and parent. Father, you're here. So, has your pain abated? <sighs> yes, a little bit. That is good. <laughs> there is no need to exert yourself to excess. If things ever feel overwhelming, you must tell me. Do you understand? Yes, Father. Mm. The fever has diminished. The medicine must have had an effect. It tasted gross, though. Good medicine frequently tastes bitter. Regarding our immediate future, I have decided to work here a while longer. Huh? When we leave this city, our next destination will be the Osuna Desert, and we will require significant supplies. So that means we don't have enough money to get everything? And that's because you had to buy me medicine, right? That means it's my fault. Your recovery is all that matters to me. Huh? I can always work to replace that money, but there is no replacement for you, Somali. I'm sorry, Father! <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't come back right away. I'm sorry I always make you worry about me so much. <laughs> I too must apologize for making you think I was going to leave you. Huh? Tell me, Father, do you promise to stay with me forever? Even when this journey's over, you swear you'll never go away? Yes. I shall always be with you. I'm so glad you said that. You gotta promise. You do promise me, right, Father? Yes, Somali. I promise.
Here's a first. Never thought I'd meet a golem in this city. I was a soldier once, long before I settled here. I saw my share of all kinds of strange plants and creatures as I traveled from place to place. In a forest far to the west, I met a golem who was coming to the end of his lifespan. Much like you are. That girl has only one wish, to be with you forever. I hope in the end you don't betray her. I fear I may have to. Aw, please don't cry, Kikua. You'll only end up getting a stuffy nose. But Somali, I can't stop. Somali, we must board the wagon. It is time. Hmm. Don't worry, Kikua. Father promised us that we could be together. He said we could journey together forever. Besides, we'll be back real soon. Okay? <laughs> okay, then. That girl has only one wish, to be with you forever. I hope in the end you don't betray her. Father! What is it, Somali? Let's go! It's time to leave, right? Yes, so it is. The increasing number of sandstorms at night requires that we travel while the sun is out. You must exercise patience until we reach a village. Drink. Failure to maintain hydration is dangerous. Ugh, it's so warm. Our first priority will be to rest upon our arrival. I can't wait to have something cold to drink. A good example of hyperbolic phrasing. Let us go. Yeah! This place is weird, isn't it, Father? Wine Cup Village is a landmark for travelers. It is built into the caldera of an extinct volcano. The terrain provides ideal shelter from sandstorms, so over time, Travelers began to gather here, and a village was formed. Hmm, well, I want to eat this, Father. Consuming only cold things will decrease your body temperature. Request denied. What? But my body is still feeling hot. A couple oh. of travelers, huh? <laughs> there you go. Safe travels. <laughs> uh... What is this? It's an old custom in our village. See, the legend goes like this. Long ago, before the village sprang up, a group of travelers gathered in the extinct caldera. One of those travelers happened to sell wine. So he shared his wares with the others and they had a banquet together. In the days that followed, mysteriously enough, every traveler in attendance managed to safely cross the desert. Ever since, it's been a custom for travelers to share drinks and pray for a safe desert crossing. One has to be especially careful to look out for dangerous tornadoes called dragon twisters, which are common in these parts. Understood. So the wine you're holding is our village's specialty. We make it out of cane stock. Cane stock? That is a source of sugar, is it not? It must be sweet then! Huh? You are not old enough for alcohol. You're a meanie! <laughs> 
We also make cane stock ice cream for the little ones. Ice cream? Mm. If we must, all right. Could I also get an order of that cane stock ice cream? Huh? What's wrong? Are you copying me? No, of course I'm not copying you. Oh dear, I'm sorry, but we only have one serving of cane stock ice cream left. I'll take it! You what? should give it to me! Hey, wait! Why should you get it and not me? Because I called dibs first! Huh? You need to have more respect for your elders, you little shrimp! I'm not a shrimp! You're the one that's acting like a baby! So, Molly, watch your volume. You sure have a big mouth for being such a little kid! Yura... What are you doing, Uzoi? Uh, hi, Tora. I apologize for her behavior. Aww. That's quite a story. It sounds like it's been very difficult. Yes, we have faced much hardship. If it's going mm -hmm. to be an extended journey, a wagon is definitely the best way to travel. It's good, huh? Oh. You can have mine. Huh? Are you sure? Thank you. No problem. I'm not really in the mood for ice cream anymore. I take it you two are traveling companions? Yes, we are. We're in a wagon. We're traveling in search of medicine. I'm in rather poor health, so I'm seeking a cure. Uzoi here has chosen to support me during this rough patch. Well, it wouldn't be safe if you were traveling all on your own. But he's not my dad or anything. I am a member of the proud Harpy clan. Hytora's a Falcohol. They've got bird heads. I guess it would be fair to say Hytora's kind of like my guardian. I see. So, what are you looking to find in your travels? You two are a bit of an odd pair yourselves, huh? We are traveling because we are searching for humans. <laughs> humans? Why do you have an interest in searching for humans? I study humans for research purposes. Hmm. I'm all done now! That was yummy! Uzoi, you're a really nice lady. Well, hey, why don't you travel across the desert in the wagon with us? Uzoi. I mean, what's the harm? We have so much stuff to haul around. All the loading and unloading is exhausting. It'd be great to have extra hands. Is that really the reason? <laughs> you got me there. But you'd get to go for free on a wagon. That's a pretty good trade-off, isn't it? Yes. But... I want to go in Uzoi's wagon! Please, Father? You truly do not mind? Uh, no. It's fine. Very well, then. We accept your offer. Thank you. You just leave it to me! <laughs> I can hardly wait to see Uzoi's wagon, Father! Naturally. Uzoi, what is it you're after here? There was more to that offer than kindness. You're right. That girl, she smells just like you, Hytora. <gasps> you don't mean... It's true.
this is the last of it. Thank you. What are you doing? Hmm? <laughs> I'm changing the wheels so they have sand paddles. We're gonna need these wheels for the route we're taking, so that we don't sink in the sand. I want to see up close. Wow, that's so amazing! Hey! <laughs> what do you want? Why are deserts always so full of sand? Don't be silly. Being full of sand is what makes them deserts. Everyone knows that. Oh, okay. How about water? Why doesn't water... Ugh, you're so annoying. What is it? Is something the matter, Hytora? No. It's nothing. As you wish. Somali, our preparations are complete. We can depart. Great! Huh? I think I left something in my room. Well then, we must retrieve it. In the future, check your room before we leave. <laughs> Uzoi. <laughs> Shall we get on the wagon? designed it this way so it would have good ventilation. Your wagon is the best thing ever! Somali, move to the center where it is safe. I'm safe. I can't see the outside from over there. Hmm? Hey, Uzoi, what are those things? Hmm? They're cactus thorns. They're tough on the outside, but once they blossom, you can eat them. Oh, do they taste good? I guess so. If you know how to cook them the right way, then they can become extremely... Uzoi, what's that? You're such a rude little thing. At least wait until I finish my... Oh. A sandstorm. Be careful, everyone. The air currents are very unpredictable. It is more like being at sea during a storm. The wagon is really shaking. Hold on tight. Don't fall out, Somali. Somali. Don't fall out right after he said not to. We need you healthy and alive, okay? <sighs> what? What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. I guess you just like me a whole lot. No. Uh, that's not really what I... Uh... What is that? Something is approaching. The most savage fish in the Osuna. Uh, a sand shark. It's possible it could come back. We should get away from here fast. Huh. Ha! He's so cool. Of course he is. Hytora is very cool. Hmm. Well, my father is also very cool, you know? Yeah, but he's not as cool as Hytora. He's totally as cool as Hytora! He totally is, not! I suggest that you both end this argument. Temperature has dropped considerably. Uzoi. Yeah, I'm on it. What's that thing for? It's a crystal finder. The thing inside it is a collar stone. It's
It's exactly like the crystals found in desert caves. Do you hear that sound it's making? Hmm? Yes, I do. That's its job. The sound is the crystal resonating with the others of its kind nearby. You see, the louder the resonance, the closer we are to a cave. Right. We'll spend the night in that cave. Hmm. What a pretty sound. I find it pretty annoying myself. I understand those of the Harpy Clan have heightened senses. That's true. But hearing everything all the time gets annoying. Uzoi, Mr. Golem and I will pitch the tent. You go secure our light sources. You got it. You're not doing anything you want to help? Sure! So why are we carrying these cages? You sure like to ask a lot of questions, don't you? You'll find out just as soon as we get there. This looks like a glowing rock, but it's a torchfly. They make perfect light sources, so we'll borrow them for the night. Ooh, I'm gonna grab one too! Huh? <clears throat> That's too high for a little runt like you. You need to pick a lower one. Look, there's one hiding there underneath the rock just beneath you. <sighs> uh, uh, you were right. Uzoi, you're so smart. Thanks! Hytora taught me about the torch flies. Whether in rugged mountains or forests, or on fields of snow. We've traveled all kinds of places together. I've been to a lot of places too with my father. Hey. What is your relationship with that golem anyway? Surely he's not your real father. My real father? What are you talking about? My father is my father. Yeah. Who's your father, Uzoi? I don't have a father. The women are the ones who raised the children in the Harpy Clan, so I only knew my mother. Oh, wow. Where's your mother? How come she's not here? Hytora told me that she died of an illness long ago. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. It happened when I was a kid, so I don't really remember. Hytora's always been there for me. He keeps me from feeling alone in this world. I love Hytora very much. So I'm not lonely at all. You're exactly like me! Huh? Why is that? Because you love Hytora a lot, and I love my father a lot. So that makes us the same. Come on, stop talking now and get to work. Huh? But you were talking just as much as I was! Just get to work, shrimp. There's a torch fly right over there. Where? Here I come! <sighs> yes. In order to save Hytora, I've got to do it. I have a question, Hytora. I heard rumors that humans were seen recently in the western Osuna Desert. Have you heard the same thing? I'm afraid I haven't. I'm sorry. Very well. So, uh, why are you searching for humans? Why do you study them? I mean, is there... does it have something to do with Somali? It is somewhat difficult to explain. I understand. Indeed. Here you go. We caught a whole bunch. Yes. Nicely done. Uzoi. There's nothing for you to worry about. You should try and get some rest for now. But... <coughs> what do you think, Father? Is there anything else I can do to help? You need help? Sure, you can help me fetch some water. There should be a spring back this way. Let's go. Okay. Exercise caution at the water's edge. Yeah, I'm on it! Uzoi! <laughs> what is it? Are you not well? <sighs> that 
That's weird, Uzui. This isn't the way we came. Huh? <coughs> if you are not feeling well... Mr. Golem, I'll come right to the point. Somali... She's human, isn't she? Well, what are you doing, Uzoi? You're scaring me. How did you know that? Please, listen to me. I'm... I'm also a human. You are human? We're traveling to try and cure my condition, but... I need help. Please help me. Help me stop Uzoi! Uzo, you... you're kind of hurting me. Please, stop it. Your blood could help save Hytora. It might even save his life. That's why... I'm going to do this. I'm going to kill you! Mr. Golem, I'll come right to the point. Somali... She's human, isn't she? How did you know that? Please, listen to me. I'm... I'm also a human. I need help. Please, help me. Help me stop Uzoi! No. What actions did you take after you fell ill? Uzoi and I went everywhere you can imagine, trying to find some kind of cure for this condition. But the time passed and we were unsuccessful. We were about to give up hope, and then one day, everything changed. Out on the fringes of civilization, we found the hut of a fortune teller. This being took one look at me and laid out my future. It is clear to me that your blood is corrupted. Until you purify that blood, you are cursed to wander this world in agony. The only way to purify contaminated blood is to replace it with the blood of an innocent. Uzoi has been dedicated to that mission ever since. She plans to take Somali's blood. Let us hurry. Your blood could help save Hytora. It might even save his life. That's why I'm going to do this. I'm going to kill you! I'm sorry. Why did you do that? Hytora is sick. And he's a human like you. Uh, he's human? Yes, he is. And we don't know how to cure him. We've been looking all over to get him some help. But we keep coming up empty. Nobody knows anything about human illnesses. His condition just keeps getting worse and worse. I thought drinking the blood of a healthy human might cure him. I thought... 
you might. Somali. Father! Hi, Tora. You found me! Were you harmed? Uh-uh. I just went for a swim. Dry your hair. You do not want to catch a cold. Ozoi. Sorry, but I had to try something. Even if it meant hurting someone, doing something awful, I thought it was worth it if it ended up saving you. I was wrong. Even though you're gonna die soon. Even though I love you so much. I failed! I couldn't do it! I just wasn't strong enough. Don't feel bad. Are you cold, Somali? I'm all right. That's good. You know, you're kind of a crybaby, Uzoi. Uh, listen, I'm sorry about hurting you. <laughs> We're friends, Uzoi, so I forgive you. Oh. You're strange, but... I like you. <sighs> Mr. Golem, can you forgive Uzoi? I do not reproach her for her actions. It was reasonable behavior for one who loves another. I recognize that this is the nature of family. Yeah, except... What is the problem? The truth is, Uzoi and I are not actually related to each other. I know we have a similar appearance. These feathers that you see growing out of my human skin, they're just like the ones you see on Uzoi's eyes and body. And there's a reason for that. A long time ago, I ate Uzoi's mother. I was once a hard-working human, carving out an existence with others like myself. I had a wife and daughter I loved dearly. We were hidden from the eyes of the other creatures in this world, the ones we called the grotesques. But then one day, without warning, we were discovered and our settlement was attacked. Creatures had been hunting us for a long time. Everyone was a target. My comrades, their families, one after another, they were caught. If they fought back, their arms were torn off. If they tried to run, their legs were cut off. And finally, most horrifying of all, some were even devoured on the spot. By a stroke of good luck, my family and I were able to find a cave in the forest in which we could hide. But when I look back at the fate that was to befall us, Perhaps it wasn't such good luck that we survived the gruesome attack.
the constant fear that the grotesques would return at some point chipped away at our morale little by little. We couldn't sleep at night. We had no real sources of food or clean water. Two days passed, then three. What is it? At this rate, we won't last much longer. I'm going outside to find food. Some kind of bird. <gasps> it's a grotesque, and it doesn't know I'm right here. Survive. The three of us have to eat her. Self, her father. Huh? What is it? All this time, he's been lying right to my face about why we're together. The wind is growing stronger. We might be heading into a storm. It's a longer way around, but let's take the western route. We'll avoid a lot of trouble. Hmm? Nice part of the food is yours, Uzoi. You can have it if you want. I'm not hungry right now. You seem upset. Did something happen last night? Oh. Honestly. I can't tell if you're being kind or just don't get it. Hmm? So, Molly, tell me something. Have you ever been lied to? What do you mean? You know, lied to. When somebody tells you things that aren't true and in the end destroys every happy memory you have of them. I feel like such a fool. All this time I thought he was my father. You mean Hydora? How can he act like my father when our relationship has been based on a lie? Mm. His love isn't a lie. Oh. Doesn't he always treat you like his daughter? <laughs> what is it? What's happening? <laughs> oh. Oh. A really big dragon twister! Both of you get back inside and grab onto something heavy! <laughs> Who 
Killjoy! Restrain yourself, or it will carry you off as well. But I have to go after Following her. them would only cause further harm to everyone. Remain calm. I have assessed the direction in which they were blown, the landscape, and the wind speed. By those measurements, they are likely to land unharmed. We must wait until the wind dies down, then retrieve them. All right. I trust you. I think I swallowed a bucket of sand. So, Molly, we're both alive. Uzoi, before we blew away, you said Hytora couldn't be your family because he lied to you. Yeah, more or less. But love's a lot stronger than a lie someone tells you. <gasps> I love my father. And you love Hytora. Oh. Then everything's gonna be okay! Considering their weight and the strength and direction of the wind, it is my calculation that they are likely to have landed in this area. What is the matter? I thought I saw some movement in the tent last night out of the corner of my eye. I think Uzoi overheard our conversation. If she knows I've been lying to her all this time, we can never go back to the way things were. You feel the time has come for a reckoning, then? What do you mean? I am referring to a reckoning for the sins of your past. Regardless of how it ultimately is resolved, you must face the person to whom you owe atonement. This is a necessary step on your part, even if it should deepen the scars. <clears throat> What's wrong? There they are. Somali. <laughs> I have identified the creature as a canter bird. It is territorial and extremely aggressive. It must have felt threatened by the sudden appearance of the girls. If we do not approach carefully, it may do great harm to all of us. I will lure the bird away. If it does attack, my golem body will be able to withstand it. While I am doing this, Hytora, you will slip in and save the girls. When I see that they are safe, I will fire a flare in the direction of the bird. When it recoils from the distraction, I will flee the area. Ozoi. Are you ready? We must begin now. We're here! Hytora! doing? Hytora, that was not the plan. I was to be the decoy. There's no reason to put you in danger. It's better if that creature chases after me. I don't have that long to live. Father, you found us! It may be Hytora's intention to die here. What are you talking about? He can't. <laughs> Since Uzoi first appeared, I've been at war with myself. Whenever she smiled at me or showed affection, I felt horrible. I knew what I'd done, and I didn't deserve her love. Inside, a voice was screaming, You did this. You're guilty. The only way to atone is to risk my life for hers. I'm ready. I deserve no better. Both of you, close your eyes. You don't get to die without my permission! How dare you choose death over facing me! Now, tell me, 
Why did you stay with me for all these years? Always moving around from place to place. Weren't you worried that I'd kill you if I ever learned the truth? You would have every right. You're the only thing I live for. I would give up my life any time you ask me. <sighs> That's right, even now. Don't say that! I don't want you to die! Usui... <gasps> Stop thinking that's the only way you could make this right! It's the coward's way out! You have to live with it! That means you have to face me every day no matter how painful it is! And you have to care for me for the rest of your life! That's the only way to make amends! Oh. I hear you. I'll always be there. I promise. All red. Of course it is, Molly. It happens when you cry a lot. <laughs> I was right when I said you were a crybaby. You're starting that again? What's your problem, Molly? I know you're upset. <gasps> I'll fix it. I promise. Oh. Yeah, well, don't be so sure. Trust me, I'll make it right. Hey, he's really serious. Yeah, he did seem sincere. My father made a promise to me. He said we'd be together forever. Yes, right, father? That is correct. Just a minute. You're not eating that whole stock, are you? I assume you're gonna share it with everyone else? What? Of course not! Fine. In that case, you're done. No, I'm not! Give it back! It's mine! Stop being such a piggy! I'm not you a piggy! Like you're a Give it back! We are several hours past Lock de Rock. It appears we have come quite far. You're right. If we keep this up, we should make it out of the Osa in the desert by tomorrow at the latest. Is something the matter? Our course was decided based on a rumor that humans had been seen at the edge of the desert. But as I examine the environment, that now seems unlikely to me. I just hope I can locate remaining pockets of humans somewhere. Hey, Uzoi? What is it? Can't you sleep? Can you tell me how come all the humans went away? Uh... Well, it's because of the war. And other stuff, I guess. What other stuff? I don't know that many details. Why is it you're asking? Because I don't know anything about them. Even though I'm a human as well. We're starting off pretty early tomorrow. We'd better get some sleep. Hmm. You gotta promise. You do promise me, right, Father? Yes, Somali. I promise. The cracks in my body continue to grow larger. I may be incapacitated before long. Hi, Tora. May I join you? I want to thank you for everything you did for me today. You've given me the determination to remain with Uzoi and help her until I no longer have the strength to go on. It's been a long time since I've felt a genuine will to live. I wish I could be with Uzoi. 
and watch over her as she grows up. I feel I owe her that much. I envy the fact that you will get to stay with Somali her whole life and help her grow to be a woman. I wish that were true. Huh? The fact is, every golem has a predetermined lifespan. And as such, my life functions are due to cease 301 days from now. <sighs> that is why, while my body is still fully functional, I must find Somali a human family. Have you had a chance to tell her about this? I have not. I don't have any information about other humans myself, but I hear that if you head west just outside of the desert, you'll find a settlement that collects knowledge from all over the world. Maybe you'll find what you need there. A repository of knowledge. Excellent. We will travel to that village and seek direction. I am sorry. I wish I could be more help. Do not apologize. Even the smallest things can be of great value. I thank you. <laughs> Uzoi and I have been on the road for a long time. I imagine traveling with a human child comes with its share of trouble. Human children are indeed driven by exceptional curiosity. They tend to disappear the moment you take your eyes off of them. Their weak immune systems cause them to suffer frequent declines in health. Many times, I have struggled to treat her with my insufficient knowledge. But I consider these challenges to be trivial, so long as they allow Somali to remain in good health. All things considered, I must say, Somali's a lucky girl. Please clarify your meaning. Nowhere in this world, as far as I know, are humans safe. We always have to stay hidden. There's no telling what will happen if we're caught. And yet somehow she found you. As a result, she can sleep at night without fear. She can smile her way through each day. She has peace of mind. And you, my friend, are the reason why. She knows you're there for her. We are the same, Hytora. I do not know if I can protect Somali until the end of my days. But when you describe how much better her life has become, this part of me feels lighter and very grateful. I wonder, is this the peace of mind you've been telling me about? It is. Wow, look! It's cooled off! Of course. That's how you know you're leaving the desert. We'll be going our separate ways pretty soon. Huh? Do we have to? I told you yesterday. I was so busy eating, I guess I didn't hear you. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You probably had food in your ears. <laughs> mm, I like you guys. I wish we could stay with you longer. Come on now, give me a smile. I don't feel like it. You don't have to be sad about this. We're gonna meet again someday. Right after I cure Hytora's illness. Oh, promise? To be honest, I don't know when or where it's going to happen. But I know in my heart that I'll be seeing you again. Because we're friends. Forever. Hmm. Oh. Come take a look. We're almost there. If you follow this river for a few miles, you should reach the village I described. Understood. What's Hytora talking about? Where are we going from here? To a place where we can get some information. And we'll be able to find out more about humans? It is possible. Oh, that would be pretty terrific! I hope it all works out. And for you as well. <laughs> Come on! We gotta get going! Let's go! <laughs> Remember what I told you. Mm-hmm. So long! I'll be seeing you again! You betcha! I can't wait, Uzoi! Neither can I, my friend.
I must say, this is quite an unusual settlement. Hello, young lady, and welcome. Would you like to try a sample of our witch's wicca wine? It's specially mixed and safe for children to drink. Mm, I've never had wine before. And how about huh? some rosemary jam today? You'll want to try an huh? herb stuffed bratwurst. I've got crimson huh? pickles here. This is the best, is I love this place. Ah, that was great. So, Molly, you are aware that dining is not the purpose of our journey, correct? Oh, that's right, I forgot. We have to find out about the humans. Sorry to intrude. Do you need to do some research? That is right. You're in the right place. Huh? That's the Witch's Crest Library, a repository of knowledge from every corner of this world. It's an amazing collection. Would you like a tour? Father, look at all the books in this place! There are more here than I had imagined. You should be able to find the answer in the medical section. 10,000 books to choose from, I should think so. This does appear promising. Where is Somali? Father, look what I found! A book about food! Breakfast of the world! Afternoon snacks! How to prepare stink berries! Ah! Yum! All I need is I am amazed at how single-minded she can so be. Good. Very sorry to have kept you waiting, Traveler. This lady is Hazel. She's one of the top librarians here. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Well, good luck. I hope you find what you're looking for. Take good care of them, Hazel. I will. Now then, what brings you to our library today? We are on a journey in search of humans. We wish to find clues regarding their whereabouts. Interesting request. Hold on a second, please. Whoa! Let me see. I seem to remember there was a biography in the warehouse that talked about humans. That sounds promising. Can you get it? I'm ready to read it. <laughs> well now, this might be a little bit too advanced for you, dear. Oh, that's all right. I'll look at the pictures, and my father will read it to me. I want to know all about the humans. <laughs> You're a funny little one. So, let me show you the way. We witches are a clan devoted to the preservation of this world. In gratitude to the god who created the land and life, and in remembrance of that great accomplishment, we have brought books to this library from around the world since the days of antiquity. Some of us leave the village to collect the books. Some of us, like me, stay here to sort the books once they have been brought back. And some are assigned the task of protecting the books. This has been the treasured duty of the witches since the dawn of time. It's a great honor, but we receive no compensation for the work. Instead, we use the knowledge we've gained to sell medicine and food to visitors. That's how we all earn our money. That food was yummy! Hmm, I'm so glad that you liked it. Now then, the book you seek should be somewhere in this area. Let me see... That's odd. As far as I know, it should be right here. According to the ledger, there's no record of it being checked out. Has it been lost, then? Hmm... No, but I think I know where it is. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but this library is at times plagued by... bookworms. Bookworms? Bookworms, sweetheart. And from past experience, what you're looking for is probably in here. Huh? <coughs> Praline, you're doing it again! Hmm? Yo, Hazel! What are you doing down in this dustbin? <sighs> Let me introduce the bookworm. This is my big sister. <laughs> hey there! Oh, brother. How many times do I have to- Wow, well, a golem! What are you doing here? <sighs> Amazing! I've always wanted to meet one of you in person. You are so freaking huge! Where'd you come from? How long are you staying? When can I- Please desist. All right. You want a book on humans, right? That's a really obscure request. Jeez. Ah! Excuse me, Praline. Could you treat these books a little more gently? I will aid your search. What is the name of the book? I think it was called The Chronicle of Horizo. What condition was it in? It was super old and fallen apart. That's all you know? There was something unusual about it. I want to say it had a blue cover and what looked like an eye printed on the spine. So, huh? Hey, Father! I found the book! 
Excellent. Uh, I'm gonna bring it down to you. <clears throat> Somali. Are you harmed, Somali? Oh, that was a close one. Uh, what are those things? They're book-eaten fish, also called pesca fish. Old paper soaked with ink is their favorite food. They're the mortal enemy of the library. They tend to get especially active during their breeding period. But why did this happen today? Probably because you left the room such a mess. Uh, I'll fix this right now! Your efforts appear to be insufficient, unfortunately. Uh, little help? Sure, why not? You're right. My magic is strong, but it only works in a small area. Hazel's magic, however, works over a large area. What <gasps> that means is, when we work together, no one can stop us. Hmm. Honestly, Praline, I wish you would calm down a little bit. <clears throat> the invasion does not appear to be over. Huh? about that book. Somali, you need to put it down. No, father. It's very important. I have to protect it. Somali. Hostile force blocked. Neutralization initiated. Somali, were you harmed in any way? Don't worry, I'm okay. But... I saw what you did to protect me, and it must have hurt a lot. I should have listened to you. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Hazel, this is it. The Chronicle of Horizo. It's in bad shape. I'm afraid it's pretty much unreadable. <laughs> I couldn't keep it safe. You are not to blame. Yes, I am. It is immaterial. Hmm? 
The truth is, your safety is what matters most to me. record of borrowers, then we could find someone who's previously read the book. You're right. Is that possible? Absolutely. Here, I found it. Huh? One person, 304 years ago, and the name was... What? Isolde, could it really be? What? That's a surprise. Yeah, I have to agree. The reader happens to be Isolde Nebzov, our head librarian. Here, I found it! One person, 304 years ago, and the name was... What? Isolde... Could it really be? What? That's a surprise. Isolde Nebzov, our head librarian. If this person read the book that long ago, I assume she is no longer alive. You'd think, but that's not true. Most witches live approximately 150 years, but superior witches who are chosen to be head librarians live much longer. Lately, though, her health has been failing. She's going to die, I'm afraid. Can we see her? Hang on a minute. Why is that book so important to you guys anyway? It is relevant to the goal of our journey. And what goal is that? Uh, what the heck is this about? Please help us. Uh, take it. I wouldn't do this for just anybody, but it has directions on how to get to where Nebzolf is. Now you owe me one, kid. Okay. She has given us a guide to a number of secret passages. What a cool book! And she made it herself! It is quite detailed. Praline probably used this route to smuggle books into and out of the library. Oh, look how far down it goes! No doubt this is a ventilation shaft. The head librarian's room appears to be on the lowest floor. Let us proceed. Father? What are those things on the wall? I am not familiar with that life form. What's happening? My ears hurt! Intruders! Alert! Intruders! Alert! Intruders! Alert! Intruders! Alert! Oh, goodness! Everyone get a hold of a weapon and follow me to the lower depths! Wow, they must have set off an alarm somewhere. I am going to jump, Somali. Look, Father! Take a deep breath and hold it. I do not know. However, it appears we have reached our destination. Do you think she's in there? Hmm? Let me see your hands! Do not move! You've entered a restricted area. You will be punished. <sighs> do not hurt them. The voice from before! They're a threat! Regardless, I want to know why they're here. Bring them both to me.
travelers. It is a pleasure to meet you. You are Isolde Nebsolve. Yes. Please forgive my appearance. It can be quite upsetting. Huh? I'm not scared. We wish to inquire about the Chronicle of Horiso. What do you want with that book? Do not be distressed, Senior Librarian Lagel. But ma'am... The Chronicle of Horizo? That name takes me back. It makes me wonder if it was our mother world herself who guided you here to find us. What do you mean? I was the one who wrote the book you speak of. And in the end, it is what drove the humans to their deaths. Let me tell you the story of Horizo. It is the story of how my ancestor, Theodora Nebsolve, first encountered the humans. What should I do now? It's still such a long way back to the witch's village. I was warned. It's so windy. village of Horizo. We make up the largest township in the area here. I don't really know the area. So what village do you hail from? Huh? Huh? <laughs> you have awakened. You have a wounded leg, but no other sign of injury or ailment. Oh, I see. You must be thirsty. I will bring you water. Hey, I want to help! Mia and Lord Horizo were the ones who found you. He's called Horizo? I have to say, he looks quite a bit different from the rest of you. <laughs> I suppose he does. In many ways, Lord Horizo is like a god to us. He was the one who first took us in and gave us this place to live. Really? He lets us farm the land. He's very generous. He doesn't charge us for it. We know his appearance is different, but there's no need to fear him. Oh, I get the picture. Everyone else who lives here is a completely different species. What did you just say, young lady? Uh, I didn't mean to offend you. Do you all have a name for your species? Excuse me, where exactly are you from? Species is a term you would use for animals or plants, isn't it? I didn't mean... Are you saying you're not a human being the same as all of us here? Well, it's complicated. Be at ease, everyone. Lord Horizo. The girl is human. Believe me, there is no cause for concern. Ah, oh, thank goodness. If you say so, my lord, then we know it's safe. Sorry for the accusations, young lady. I hope you feel better soon. Here, drink this water. Thank you very much. Can I ask, why did... All oh, those people seem to get so upset. The truth is, they possess a great fear of the unknown. All right, but why are they scared? I came here by accident. I'm not here to hurt anyone. I have learned that humans are a frail and cowardly species. When they encounter a creature that does not conform to their worldview, they cannot experience peace of mind until they purge it from existence. If they were to learn that you were not the same species as them, you would very likely suffer the same fate. How awful. That means if I can't find a way to get back home, I might... Your fears are unfounded. <sighs> I will guarantee your safety while you are here. <sighs> oh, I'm 
sorry to get so emotional. I'm just so relieved. This is what happens when my species cries. It's unusual. <gasps> You're a kind creature. Golems lack all capacity for emotions. So, the species that you belong to is called Golems, then? I am Theodore and Nepsov of the Witch Clan. I am Horaiso. It's a pleasure to meet you. Fixes! Uh, here! My grandma made some mochi for you. What's in it? Potatoes. Oh. Okay, thanks a lot, Mia. I'll try it. <gasps> Amazing! What a delicious flavor! <gasps> Would you like some? No way! I can't eat those things, they're not cute enough! What? Sure, potato mochi might be tasty, but my friends say it's cuter to eat cake. They say I look just like an old woman when I eat mochi. <laughs> I get it. There you go, you're all done now. <gasps> I can't believe it, it's so cute! I'm gonna wear it like this all the time! The other you saved me, so I wanted to thank you. <laughs> Mia, there's something else you should know. I did it for another reason, too. You look as sweet and adorable as you are now. Even if you ate potato mochi, no one could call you an old lady. Thanks! This might work out after all. Everybody seems to be treating you very well. Yes, they are. How is your leg? It's all better now. I see. I have investigated the situation in which you find yourself. The dragon twisters that periodically appear above us travel in a circle around the island, then head back in the direction they came from. If you position yourself to catch an early morning wind, it will likely return you to your home. Oh, really? You're sure about that? But... I like it here. I'll miss everybody so much when I leave. <gasps> Mia? Is it true? Are you really gonna leave here tomorrow? Mm-hmm. But why? Why can't you stay here forever? I'm sorry, Mia. But I don't want you to go. Are you sure you can't stay a little longer? <laughs> Can we at least stay friends, please? Of course. I'll always be your friend, Mia. Huh? What's going on? A grotesque! Huh? A grotesque showed up. <laughs> oh no! This is awful! Please let us go. We haven't done anything to deserve this. That's right, humans. We're not your enemy. What's happening here? This creature is talking just like a person. That's really creepy. You're right. Let's shut him up. Monster! 
her! Monster scum, go die! You get out of here! I'm glad you're dead! I can't stay here. If they learn what I am, they'll kill me too! Theodora. I'll just wait out the night here. Theodora, dear! Where are you, sweetheart? It's getting dark. You need to come home. Nixus? Oh, Mia. <laughs> I thought you might be here. Come on, we need to go back. Everybody's looking for... Huh? Hey, Mia, let me ask you something, okay? If I were a grotesque, what would you do to me? <laughs> That's a silly question. You're human. And you're my best friend, so there's no way you could be a monster. Of course. <laughs> Mia! <gasps> Mia! Mia! Theodora, there you are! <gasps> Wait, is that Mia down there? She's hurt. We need to get her back up. Of course we do, but how? We're running out of time. The vines are starting to give way. I could save Mia, but... human get out you monster you lied from the very beginning i bet you were planning to murder us in our sleep what are we waiting for let's kill her my big sis because you saved mia you will be pardoned but you must leave here this instant and promise to never return Mia, she's a monster! No, she's not! She can never be what you say! She's my friend! Thank you for that, Mia. This is all that is known of the Chronicle of Horizo. Theodora returned to the witch's village. In time, she became the head librarian. She told the story to her successor, and then forbid it to be written down for a thousand years. After her personal experiences, she believed more time would be needed before we and the easily frightened humans could come together peacefully. But then I violated her wishes. I wrote everything down in a book, and by doing so, I killed the humans. Listen to me, none of that was your fault! That is true. It seems to be merely a series of coincidences. Hmm? So, Father, the people in that story, were all of them humans just like me? They were. <sighs> so I could act... that way? Come closer. Huh? But ma'am, is this- There's nothing to fear. Is warm. Huh? Tell me the truth. Are you afraid of us? No way. I've got a lot of friends here. Then everything will be fine. We can establish a relationship, just like the bond that formed between Theodora and Mia. A bond? 
It's a love between two hearts that can never be torn apart. Love between two hearts? Forever? A bond. If it is humans you seek, your travels must take you to the ends of the world. That is where their descendants may yet remain. You have my gratitude. No, my friend. It is I who am grateful to have had the chance to meet you at my end. May the world grant you her protection as you continue on your quest. doing, Somali? Huh? I'm playing frog! We must find shelter from this rain. If we do not, you will fall ill from exposure to the elements. Alright, Father! Huh? <laughs> Let's see who can jump the farthest! Ready? Here goes! <laughs> no. The rain falls down and it soaks the ground So the dirt gets floody and my feet gets muddy And my cloak gets Huh? Hey, look over there, Father. What's that thing? It appears to be some kind of treehouse. We should ask the owners if they will provide us shelter. Yeah! No one else seems to be in residence at the moment. How do you feel about staying here for the night? <sighs> that sounds like fun. Where are we? I believe this is a lodge built for tappers. What's a tapper? The trees in this area are known as candy bombs. They produce a sap with a very high sugar content. The holes we saw in the trees are probably the result of sap extraction. A crystallized version of the sap can be ground into a product known as bomb sugar. It is sold by local vendors as candy. Oh, you mean that sweet melty stuff? Those who extract the sap from the trees are known as tappers. It would seem from the pictures and implements that some of them take up lodging here during the harvest season. Do you understand now? Mm-hmm. I get it. We should proceed with dinner. Mm-hmm. Let's have dinner! Go to the ends of the world. I wonder, will my body hold out long enough to complete the trip? Father? Somali. Why is it that you are still awake? Can you read this book to me first? I found it next to my bed. One of the tappers must have left this behind. It contains cooking advice. Honey mushroom milk jam. The gentle sweetness of cow's milk and honey mushrooms. One spoonful <gasps> will reinvigorate and overcome any exhaustion. Listening to that makes my mouth water. What else is there? Beef stew with wicker wine. The stimulating aroma and taste of rich wine will bring sighs of contentment from the most discerning palate. Here are some other dishes. Baked horned rabbit, cactus thorn and pork egg drop soup, sand shark prepared Eastern style with a dash of... I'm starving. I need more food now. You just finished your dinner. Yeah, even so. The stuff you're reading about sounds so good. Can you make any of it? Huh? I cannot guarantee its quality. How do we start? Look at all that food. 
preserves. Since we are using their supplies, I will leave them money for that, as well as for our use of their house for lodging. Mm-hmm. We start with coarse ground flour, baking powder, and butter. For cow's milk, we will use a powdered version intended for travel. The eggs will be wild bird eggs gathered from the local trees. Finally, I will use balm sugar. So, Father, what are you making for us? The entry in the book refers to it as a coarse flour souffle. Is it cake? Probably a similar product. When you eat cake at night, I bet you it tastes even better. Shall we begin now? I'm gonna be your helper! First, we must separate the yolks from the eggs. Then we add balm sugar to the yolks and make sure everything is mixed well. Ah. We add half of the flour to the baking powder and mix it in the bowl. <laughs> we then dissolve the powdered milk in water, add in the remaining flour, and blend everything thoroughly. Huh? Father, can I ask you something? Do we need these eggs? I mean, if not, can I eat them? They will be used later in the recipe. And regardless, the consumption of raw eggs is dangerous. According to the book, the next step in the recipe is to add a small amount of balm sugar to the egg whites. Then we must whip the mixture until it is fluffy and cloud-like. Like rain clouds? We will see after I mix it. What do you think? Oh, it looks like a cloud. What a good job, Father. We now add this to the earlier batter and mix everything together, taking care to preserve the foam. Line a mold with butter, <laughs> sprinkle it with sugar, then pour in the batter. Now we must wait. After baking in the oven for seven turns of the timer, it will be complete. Father? Yes? I was thinking, I'm a lucky girl to have you as my father. Are you? Mm-hmm. Somali. Mm. Somali. Uh -huh. What, Father? Look, your souffle is complete. Ooh, it looks so good! Is it alright to eat it? Yes, but be careful so as not to burn your mouth. How is the taste? <laughs> what is the matter? Was an eggshell left inside? No. It tastes so good. I just couldn't stop from crying. That is an exaggerated response. It is not exasperated! Here I got to eat the first thing you ever cooked, and I'm really happy! You are? It will cool quickly. You should eat it while it remains hot. Right! <laughs> There's something... Wait, Somali. Huh? Do not speak. I'm sorry to bother you at this late hour, sir, but we're looking for shelter for... Uh, you again. Good heavens! Is that you, Mr. Golem? Is Somali still with you? Shizuno! Yabashira! What a stroke of luck finding you both this way. Spending a night out in the rain is a surefire way to catch a cold. 
It's been such a long time, Shizuno. I guess it has. I think you've grown since we last met. You mean it? Mm-hmm. You're such a big girl now. I'm so glad to see you again. Mm-hmm. We have a bond. A bond, you say? She has developed opinions on that subject. You're right about that. Oh. Well. Father made it. It's a shufa fly. Not bad at all for your first try. It was simply a matter of following instructions. He learned to bake. He kept his promise. Mm-hmm. Hey, do you mind if we try some of your creation? I do not object. Well, then let's eat. I'm starving. All right! <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I'm sleepy, so I'm going to bed now. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy the shoe fly pie! Huh? I don't know what to do. Uh... I can't eat anything. My tooth's wiggly. It might fall out. Mm. Here huh? you go. Have one. It's delicious. Thanks, Shizuno, but not right now. You seem to be a little distracted this morning. No, not at all. I'm the same as always. <laughs> hmm. Is that the town? Yes, it is called Bygone City. I hope you don't mind us stopping here. There aren't too many settlements this far out in the country. We only plan to stay until we've restocked our supplies. Oh? This city has a rather savage air to it. Criminals of all kinds seem to be drawn to places like this. In the lawless reaches, you have everything. Thieves, murderers, black markets full of poached and smuggled items. I have to say, it's not a comfortable place for a man of culture like myself. That brings up the obvious question. Why did you want to stop here at all? There's a simple answer. A practitioner from the dentition city of Chutin set up shop in town. I was hoping to learn some things from observing him at work. What does he do? He's a doctor who specializes in teeth. Yep. He can even pull them out if they hurt. I have read about this practice. In most cases, a damaged tooth has to be removed for the health of the individual. Uh, uh, my tooth. One, two, three. Come on, let's go. <gasps> there it is. That has to be the place. Hello, we're coming in. Huh, how strange. No one seems to be here. Excuse me! Huh? I don't care who you are, but you better watch where you're going in here. I hear a voice, but I see no one present. Huh? I'm standing right in front of you. For Pete's sake, what good is it having eyes if he don't use them? The name's Sowak, folks. I'm from the Hydramis clan, obviously. I suspected that. Dentition is a profession reserved for your clan because of its small size, right? Yeah! We were made for this kind of work, because we gotta go inside the mouths to take care of the messed up teeth! You go inside someone's mouth? Isn't that what I just said? What's the deal? You want me to draw you a picture or something? Could you? That would be great! That was sarcasm! You just have to open your ears and listen real close! First, I secure the patient's mouth with some straps. Then I go inside. That is quite a vivid starting image. After that, I carefully examine the teeth up close and personal. If I find a rotten spot on one of them that's turned into a cavity, I drill the damage right out. It's quite a procedure. <laughs> then I treat it with some medicine and put a cap on it so the tooth is usable. There are two kinds of caps. One made of clear sap mixed with a healing compound and one made of silver that's specially designed to look like a tooth. Mm -hmm. If I have to drill a big hole, I use the sturdy silver cap. For a small hole, I use the sap cap. But if the tooth is in really bad shape, I sometimes have to yank it out right from the root. <laughs> if I get someone early, I usually don't have to go all out with their treatment. But if it's too late to save the tooth, there's no other option. So I'm warning you, take care of your teeth, folks. If you don't, once you lose them, they'll never grow back. <laughs> so, is anybody hungry? We can eat after we secure lodging. What? Somali. <laughs> 
Your behavior today has shown signs of aberrance. Is something the matter? Is there an issue with your mouth? Let me see. No, it's nothing, really. It's nothing at all. So, Molly. It's probably too late to save my tooth. It's gonna get yanked out. <laughs> hey, back off. <sighs> what the hell is your problem, kid? Hmm? Huh? Are you all right, Somali? So you're the kid's guardian, huh? Fine, then. You need to pay each of us for that attack. About a thousand apiece should cover it. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to lack that amount. That ain't the right answer, pal. Then give us whatever you've got in your pouch. Unless, of course, you want to pay us off with broken bones and bruises. Oh, I get it. That's how it works, huh? In that case... <gasps> hey, what the hell? Cut it out! <laughs> Did you not say we could pay you off with broken bones? Not ours! <gasps> Damn it! What do you think you're doing? Nothing. Just adapting to the local customs. <laughs> Wait. I can sell that kid. Go and hide, Somali. enough yet? <clears throat> You'll pay for this? Yeah, yeah. Somali. Huh? What is the matter? Were you harmed? Look, Father. My tooth. It came out. I can see that. What happens now? The guy we saw said it will never grow back. Hmm. Pardon my butting in, but are you sure it's not a baby tooth? Did you say baby tooth? <laughs> Are you telling me that's what's got you both in such a tizzy? I have no knowledge of how to replace children's teeth. Don't worry, young lady. You've got fine dentition and no signs of damage. Just wait and a new tooth will grow in where the old one fell out. <sighs> oh, I almost forgot. Huh? What is this? It's a gift, my friend. Some folks like to keep their baby teeth as a memento. So I created a little carrying case you can take with you. Unfortunately, we are living on the road at the moment. It is important that we travel light. Oh, really? In that case, I can just throw it out if you like. No. On second thought, perhaps I will take it after all. As a memento. Oh, hmm. <laughs> You see the little holes in that disc? That's how many teeth you have left to lose as you're growing up. <laughs> I can't wait to fill them all in, Father. Indeed. What the heck is wrong with this town? There isn't a single vacancy anywhere. Huh? I've been looking for you. I heard you were the ones who beat up that gang of young punks. You're responsible, right? <laughs> we're being challenged by everyone in this town. Is there something you require? <laughs> oh, yeah! Sorry, I missed it. It must have been quite a show. Huh? Mm -hmm. I heard you might be having trouble finding a room for the night. I'd be happy to give you guys a place to stay. But in exchange, I could use a little assistance. What is your proposal? I run a small hotel here in town. But things get real dicey during snow crossing. What is snow crossing? Hmm? Oh. Good question. Here's your answer. The weather gets pretty extreme in this part of the world. Every year for a full week, we get hit with a blizzard like you can't believe. It's a frozen flood, like a snow waterfall. We call it snow crossing. Bygone's never really a safe place to be. But at this time of the year, we get a lot more travelers, and things get even worse. <gasps> there are fights every day, money gets stolen, people <sighs> lie and cheat. It's a mess! Yeah. That brings me to my proposal. I'd like you to be my bodyguards. I beg your pardon? Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting you do it for free, obviously. But you're gonna need shelter for the next week, and I have a little place on the edge of town that you can move into. It's much safer than the inns around here, and I won't charge you anything for the stay. Not a bad deal, eh? Nice. 
What a pretty little house, and very well maintained. Being a bodyguard isn't really my thing, though. Even so, a promise is a promise. Starting tomorrow, we must all work together to guard the innkeeper. I'll do my part. Huh? Sudden cold spells tend to trigger sneezing fits in her. Her body seems to be highly susceptible to the cold of the snow. After all the time you've spent together, you sure know her really well. Okay. Breakfast is all ready for the morning. I think I'm going off to bed. I need some rest in preparation for tomorrow. Understood. Good night, then. So, I've been thinking about something. Is Somali, is it true that she's human, isn't she? How long have you known? From the first time we met, I felt something about her was off. When she was injured, I noticed that her blood had a particular smell. I see. Can I ask a question? Why is someone like you pretending to be a father of a human child? It is not a thing I sought out for myself. I found her abandoned amongst the trees and could not simply walk away. I responded as I would to any lost creature. I believe that on that day, I ceased being simply the guardian of the forest. I instead became Somali's protector and her father. No detectable life signs. This must have been their cargo. Humans, apparently. Understood. It appears to be a human child. Are you... father? Uh, it is father! So she said father? So Molly called you that from the start? Even now, I do not know why. Perhaps it was her need to feel the protection and security of an adult figure around her. The one thing I am sure about, from that day to this, she has regarded me as her one and only parent. Hear me, human. You must leave this place. Outsiders do not belong in this forest. But why, father? You are mistaken. I am not your father. Cease this pursuit and leave the forest at once.
I must not intervene in the affairs of outsiders. Yet without my assistance, this human child will starve to death. That is certain. No, the child does not fall within my oversight. My duty is simply to oversee the forest, nothing more. <laughs> I was looking for you, Father. You are not allowed to pursue me any further. If you continue to follow me, I shall have to take action to remove you. This is your final warning. You must leave this forest. Here. You do not fall within my standard responsibilities. Ingest these items, then depart. What's ingest mean? Ingest, and it means to eat. So good! I see. It is clear to me that you do not wish to leave the forest, human child. I must request that you state your reason for this. They told me it was very scary outside, and I should hide in the trees. Who exactly issued this order? What is your point of origin? What is your name? I don't know that stuff. This line of inquiry is apparently futile. Tell me, where are your father and Here, mother? Here, father! That title is incorrect. I cannot comprehend that sentiment. What's comprehend mean? It means I understand the words you are using, but not the feeling behind them. As a guardian, I only act in accordance with my predetermined tasks while overseeing the forest. I exist only to serve the forest. Don't you get lonely out here? Golems lack emotions. It does not bother me to exist in the forest alone for perpetuity. But now you're not alone. I'll be with you, forever! <gasps> Remain still. The rattling of your chains is bound to attract many animals. <laughs> Thank you, Father! Such words are unnecessary. I will go now to catch fish for you to eat. Hmm. Huh? Something's happening. What do you mean? Grabbed it! 
Why did you jump in? Because pieces of your arm fell off! I was aware. It was of no importance. You should don't not have... Don't say that! I don't want you to be breaking apart, Father! Your concern is misplaced. To begin with, that part was not fused to me. You must reflect upon how close you came to drowning. Your actions were essentially pointless. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. <sighs> My deterioration has accelerated. I have relatively little time remaining. And after I disappear, the chances that this child will be able to survive in the forest alone are extremely low. There is no choice. We're leaving the forest? Yes, I must return you to the humans. It is best that we depart now, while it is still the warm season. There is one more thing, the matter of your name. Oh, look! It's the kitty! <laughs> the creature's name is Komidori Somali. It means steeped in Viridian. He is the one who first found you. Somali. Huh? It is appropriate. I have decided I will name you after that creature and henceforth call you Somali. Somali? Yes, you are Somali. <sighs> Thank you. I like it. That is how I came to know Somali. It also explains why we embarked on our journey together. Let me ask you something. How much longer do you have in your life cycle? I don't mean to pry, but I'd like to examine the current state of your body. Would that be all right with you? I have no objections. What you see is all of my outer skin that remains. Cracks have begun to form on my inner flesh, and fluid is seeping out at an increasing rate. A month ago, I noticed that my joints had begun to creak. I have hesitated to ask this, but when my body at last breaks down, I hope you will look after Somali. I can do that. I promise. But is that really what you want? You've come all this way with a body you knew was failing. What's driving you? I have thought about this at some length. Having traveled with Somali all this time, nothing has changed from the day I first met her. It is as simple as this. I am fulfilled each and every time I see her smile. Then don't surrender to what you think is inevitable. You believe your life is limited, but maybe there's a way to stop that progression. It could happen, you know? Morning. Morning. It's cold in this place. <laughs> Maybe I'll go back and sleep for a little longer. Don't you start with me first thing in the morning. Put your mouth to work and have some tea. <sighs> so off you go, huh? To work as a bodyguard? Yes. The promise was for seven days. We'll probably be dealing with some pretty rough customers, but I'm sure we can handle it. I made some food, so eat it when you get hungry. And after you eat, clean this place. Don't forget, okay? I will. Don't nag. I am a little concerned about leaving Somali in someone else's care. Don't you worry now. I'll keep a close eye on her. I promise she'll be just fine. Just to warn you, she is willful and foolhardy. Huh? She will charge straight for anything that catches her interest. Take care that she does not trip on a rock or fall off a cliff. I wouldn't worry about... Regarding her taste in foods, I have found she dislikes bitter vegetables, even though they are clearly nutritious. She will resist ingesting them, but I have found that if you prepare... I think he gets the idea. Don't you think you're being a little overprotective here? On what basis? Now, don't you worry. The great Shizuno will take good care of her. Get going. I'll see you both later. That is a bit concerning. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Time to get.
it up. Huh? Shizuno! You see all the snow? Hey, Father! Where is he? He and Yabashira both went off to go work. That's right, I forgot they're bodyguarding today. And that means you're home with me for the day. I think the first thing we should do is have breakfast together. Here, Here we, we go, go down, down the, the hatch. hatch. Hmm. <laughs> this is great. So what do you want to do after breakfast? Hmm? I want to... That's weird. I can't think of anything. Usually I just hang out and play games with Father. That's it? Oh, hey, I know what. While he's gone today, I want to make a thank you present for Father. Yeah, what a great idea. But you have to promise not to tell him, all right? Whatever you say, my lips are sealed. A present for my father, a present for my father. I'm making a pretty present for my father. Hooray! <laughs> it's all done. Mm. Are you finished with your father's portrait? I don't think it looks like him. Oh, I don't know. I think it looks pretty good myself. Pretty good isn't good enough. It has to be the perfectest. Forget it. I'll make him something else. All right, but what? Aww. You'll come up with an idea. Let's think it over while we clean. Okay. We have returned. <laughs> Welcome back, Father. How about that? Your welcome home is pretty enthusiastic. I'm not enthusiastic. The reason is clear. This is the first time I have been away from you for any extended period. Mm-hmm. Now that I understand what's going on, it makes a lot more sense. Mm. I gotta tell you, that was a really rough experience. You know, I figured we'd have to break up a whole lot of fights, but we also had to deal with thieves and deadbeats. I tell you, it's a good thing there were two of us. I couldn't have handled it all on my own. But... No matter how difficult it is, we're getting paid for our trouble. So in the end, I guess it's all worth it. That's easy for you to say. I now remember. Before we left, the innkeeper said he would send supplies here tomorrow. When you say supplies, are you talking about food? Yeah. Considering how much snow fell today, shopping could be awfully tough. We'll let him know we appreciate the gesture. You will have to receive the supplies. We'll be ready! By the way, Shizuno... I took a look, and your cleaning was pretty sloppy today. <laughs> Try and do a better job tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You must help out as well, Somali. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. I have to think of a good present. I wouldn't worry. He'll like anything. <laughs> huh? <sighs> Are you all right? What happened? I was thinking so hard I fell. Oh, I know what you can give him. We have all this yarn. Maybe you can knit him a present. I don't know how to knit. How can I make something? I know how, so don't worry. I'll teach you. I'll do it. It's a good idea. I'm ready, but what is it I'm going to make? That's a good question. Hmm? The supplies must be here. Hi, we were expecting... Oh! Well, how charming. You must be the little child they told me about. Uh, no, you've made a mistake. I'm a little adult, actually. The little child you want is uh... over there. Oh my, I beg your pardon. I'm the innkeeper's wife. I'm Rosa. But everyone in town calls me Auntie Rosa. Oh! <gasps> You mean you're giving us all this stuff for free? Why, of course we are. Your friends were a great help to my husband at his business yesterday. So please, eat as much as you like. Oh? Are you in the middle of knitting something? We're about to start making a present for Somali's father. Yeah, except there's a problem. I can't think of what to make. I have a suggestion. Have either of you ever seen a Fida band by chance? Wow, they're so pretty! Fida bands are commonly sold as souvenirs throughout this part of the country. We carry a selection at our inn. They're also known around here as good luck bracelets. <sighs> we make them in hopes of bringing good fortune to the recipient. That sounds great, but I don't know if I can make one. Oh, don't get upset. There's a simple three-color braid that children can do, and I can teach it to you. 
First off, you need to choose any three colors you like. Hmm, I want that. Oh yeah, and that one. Uh, let's see, and this one. <laughs> Lay out the three colors of yarn together. Then bring the yarn on the right to the center. Then bring the yarn on the left to the top. Then keep taking turns, center to center. Just do that over and over. Well, that's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah! <laughs> Just keep braiding those threads. Don't rush now, young lady. Hey, look at this, it's working! Isn't that great, Somali? I'm sure your father will be thrilled. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. The truth is, the more feeling you put into the work, the stronger the bond will be. So braid everything with the greatest care. Okay, I'll do the bestest job. Oh, see? Now that's what I like to hear. Good. Oh. Hey, you're a good <laughs> hugger, but that tickles. <laughs> Auntie Rosa? Huh? Could you teach me how to make one as well? Oh, I'd be happy to. <laughs> now before we get started, what colors would you like to use? We have both returned. Yay, you're back! Take a load off, Yabashira! Well now, who in the world taught you to say that? <laughs> you appear to be quite excited. Has something unusual happened, Somali? Mm-mm. It's all perfect! <laughs> Thanks for the heads up! That's valuable information. It's not a wild goose chase, right? As soon as I hugged her, I knew. No question. She smelled just like a human. No! That really hurts! The next time you decide to pick a fight, do it somewhere else. Huh? I wondered where you'd gone. I apprehended this thief in the process of thieving. Brother, my shoulders are stiff and my back aches. This job will be the death of me. Is that a likely outcome? <laughs> no, it was just a figure of speech. Very impressive job, you two. Goodness, what a fine couple of bodyguards you turned out to be. Thanks for the compliment. And thanks for the supplies you delivered yesterday. Oh, my pleasure. Heaven knows you certainly earned it. I hate to see you go. I hear it's your last day. We must move on. Tomorrow morning we will depart for our next destination. I see. Are you planning to take the western road when you go? That is our current plan. Is that so? It's a dangerous route, though. It'll be filled with robbers this time of year. But don't you worry. I'll show you another way to go that only the villagers here know about. After all, we certainly wouldn't want anything to happen to Somali. No. So, how's it coming, Somali? Almost done! Well, that was a lot of work when you consider how big Golem's hands are. A little bit more... There! It's finished! What do you think, Shizuno? Let me take a look. Oh, wow! That looks really good! I hope he likes it. Oh, trust me, I'm sure he'll be very pleased. <laughs> you think? I can't wait to show him when he gets back! That's the last of it. What we got today should pretty much cover us. By my calculations, we should not lack for supplies in the near future. And our pay will cover travel costs. We should be fine. In fact, all we really need is a better wagon, huh? What's up? You thinking of buying that for Somali? I have to admit, it's pretty cute. I think she'd love it. Especially the helmet. Huh? It is the perfect protective ensemble. I would feel much more secure in our travels if she were wearing that. You're presuming she'll even put it on. You think I should prioritize insulation over defense then? It is a difficult choice. <laughs> Never thought I'd see you stress out over kids' clothing. Have I become an object of amusement? Not really. And as a matter of fact, I like this side of you. 
do you? Hmm. We have returned. So, um, hey, Father? Yes? I just... Well, uh, I made this. It's special for you. For me? Mm-hmm. She's been anxious. She couldn't wait for you to see it. Oh, it looks like a Fita band. And you made this yourself? Mm-hmm. I worked on it all of yesterday and today. Did you? Huh? Uh, is that for me? I bought it in the market. I confess, I did not make it myself. <sighs> my, my. Like father, like daughter. You both even think the same way. I just have to tie it up like that. <laughs> Look, now we match. Yes. Hmm. This is the bestest gift. Thank you so much, Father. Huh? Oh. It is I who am grateful, Somali. Oh. Hmm. Well now, I know it's a bit early for dinner, but I think I'd better get started. Let's not jump the gun. First, we have something very important to do. Something, something important? important? Yes. A snowball fight! Ah! She's an old that wasn't very nice. <laughs> oh, please. This is what you call something important? I certainly do. If we have this much snow, it would be a crime against nature not to play in it. <laughs> See, I told you. Okay, now it's my turn. Take this and this and this. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the bigger kid? I am grateful to Shizuna for watching over Somali during the time I must be apart from her. Looks like she survived. Hope she doesn't pick up his messy what habits. Help, Father! I need some resupportments! Understood. <laughs> Mr. Golem, don't you think that snowball's a little over the top? All right! Ah! Hey, don't make me a target! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sure this is a place? That's what the informant said. No matter who catches the human, we split it evenly, though. You got it. I'm sure there's enough for all of us. Human? How did they find out? What? A human hunt? Yes. They will arrive here shortly. Why would they bother coming all the way out here? They must have gotten some bad information. We don't have a human being anywhere near this yes, place. Yes, we do. Huh? We have one. Right here. Uh, uh, you mean the kid? No way! It's true. I've known it for a while, and I'm gonna protect her. Because she's my friend. She's an old... Yabashira, do you feel the same way? <clears throat> Let me ask you. A while ago, you told me you liked the sweets I cooked up, right? Yeah. Which means... you want to eat them? Yeah. But I want us to... eat them all together! <laughs> well, that is reason enough for me to protect you. Huh? <laughs> uh. 
Hey, you! Turn around! Don't you guys know what time it is? What in the world brings you here at this hour? Why don't you have a cup of tea and calm down? Your Oni clan. We heard there was a human somewhere in this house. A human? Oh, please, give me a break. I think you've been reading too many mystery stories. Huh. <laughs> Search this whole place. <sighs> Nothing here! I can't find it either! <sighs> See? Like I already told you, there are no humans here. Hmm? Blast it! He's going off to warn the human, I bet! Follow him! Don't let him get away! That was close. Hopefully, they'll be safe in there. Where are we, Father? It's spooky down here. It is an old abandoned mine. I have been told it will take us past the mountains without requiring us to use the main road. Yabashira has agreed to meet us at the exit. You think Yabashira will be okay? Don't worry about him. When he wants to hide, he's nearly impossible to catch. Really? Oh, yes. He's a slippery one, I can tell you that for sure. He thought it'd be cool to make himself the decoy. Huh? Yabashira's super cool anyway. You really think so? Yes, he makes good sweets. You're funny, Shizuno. You make me feel good every time I'm around you. You're my best friends. I like the both of you a lot. Oh. We gotta get going. Yabashira's out there waiting for us. What is the matter, Shizuno? Nothing. It's just that... I think I'm starting to understand why you feel the way you do. Come on! You're too slow! We've gotta hurry! I've started to realize I would do anything to protect that smile, too. She's quite a mystery, but she is a special girl. Yes. Do we have a whole lot further to go? There is a stone bridge ahead that will take us past the ravine. And after we cross that, hmm? Human hunters are approaching quickly. We must run. Uh, but I thought they were being led away. These hunters are different from the first group. They are very close. Oh no! We're trapped! <gasps> Over here! They're cut off! I don't understand. How did they find us? Did they know our route? Is that the human we've been chasing? Pretty small, but it looks tasty. <gasps> hmm. Alright, time to give us the kid. Shizuno, do not bite your tongue. Uh, uh, huh? Uh, 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 actually made it. Cool! Wow! That was amazing! Terrific! They will catch up with us soon. We must hurry. Okay. I may have used too much power in carrying out our escape. My body is starting to creak and will not stop. Why are you protecting that despicable human? You know they ain't good for nothing but selling and eating. Shut your big yap. Ah! Uh. That's a bad sign. I hope they got through all right. <sighs> are you getting tired, Somali? It's understandable. It's way past your bedtime now. However, once we climb those stairs, we'll be right by the exit. Let's go! Once we have left the tunnel, we must immediately find a place to hide. I agree. 
Plus, we'll need to reconnect with Yabashira as soon as... Mm -hmm. Who is up there? Thank the heavens you all made it this far. Look, it's Auntie Rosa! I completely forgot that the bridge had collapsed back there. So I came down to bring you a map with a new escape route. We appreciate that. Thank you so much, Auntie Rosa. Oh. This is it. The way out is right through there. That's wonderful! Hold on. I do not understand. Auntie Rosa? What is this? Why did you imprison us? Free us at once. Don't worry about that. You two will be released very soon. However, Somali will have to stay. Why is that? <gasps> because in this world, humans can be quite valuable. Hmm. Is it true? You're working with these human hunters? <sighs> Father? I can destroy this cage. But if I expend my powers, it will seriously reduce my capacity to function. I cannot risk losing my ability to protect Somali. Therefore, I have no choice. I must wait for the correct moment to strike. We better get ready. Absolutely. Anyway, it will take a while to complete the preparations. So let me tell you a story you've probably never heard. Once upon a time, back a hundred or two hundred years ago, when I was still a child, things in this world were very different. A secret settlement of humans lived near the village where I grew up. The two populations lived in peace, never interfering with one another. One day, a human child in the forest was threatened by a pack of wild wolves. A kind man from our village caught sight of the situation. Without hesitation, he risked his life to save the child, and fearlessly drove off the bloodthirsty animals. He attempted to return the child to his parents. The humans killed him. Surely that was a misunderstanding. Unfortunately, it wasn't the first time this had happened. There had been many similar incidents that had taken place. How could someone be so heartless to another being, just because they happened to belong to a different species? As a child, I couldn't understand it. Before long, I learned it came from a mindset known as prejudice. One thing led to another, and soon a war started between our two villages. It became obvious that some species simply weren't compatible. We came to the conclusion that annihilation of the humans would make us safer. There was never a second thought. Once our course was set, we murdered you, sold you, consumed you. And truly... You brought all of it on yourselves. Somali. Are you alright? I would never do that. Long, long, so long ago, very uh. far from home, the strangers from far away came here alone. Across the sea they traveled on blazing a new trail. First person they saw there had horns and a tail. The travelers were scared of folks they'd never seen before. They whispered they'd better strike in case there could be more. They hunted us and cut up each and every one they caught. Then ripped up red flowers and dropped them in the brutal soup in the pot. That song's kinda like the one Kikila taught me. It's an old children's song. 
And here's a word I'll bet you've heard during your travels. A word for someone who looks different. The word is grotesque. We didn't look like you humans, so you grouped us all under that term. Even though to us, you were the grotesque ones. And that's why, all these years later, we hunt you down wherever we find you to make sure you're exterminated. <gasps> Enough talk. It looks like we're ready. I believe it's time to divvy up the cake. I'll take the eyes. I want the brain. It's the tastiest. Give me the guts. They're nice and chewy. Be smart and don't eat everything at once. The meat of children fetches a very high price. Oh, and while you're at it, do me a favor and save me the liver. I won't argue the fact that humans in the past might have sinned, but look, Somali has nothing to do with it. Oh! She's no. <laughs> That's it. Now hand over the kid. You leave me no choice. <sighs> what the hell? You will not have Somali. Mr. Golem! Huh. Gave me a scare for a second there. Father! Father! Please, you have to get up! You have to be alright, Father! What has happened to my body? I have lost feeling in my left arm. Somali, release her immediately. No, Father! No, don't do this! Let me go! Leave me alone! Shut up, you brat! You're my people! Stop it! Father, please! Scrawny little bitch. Should be easy to cut through, though. Huh? Huh? What's going on over there? I don't understand. What the hell? What's he doing now? Father? Enough talk. It looks like we're ready. I believe it's time to divvy up the cake. That's it! Now hand over the kid! You leave me no choice. You will not have Somali. Should be easy to cut through, though. Huh? Huh? What's going on over there? acquired. Internal heat and spirit limit conversion have been initiated. Is he about to attack us? Activate.
man! Run for it! What's happening? Hey, wait for me! What's happened here? It looks like he's gone crazy. Come on, we have to stop this. What the hell, Rosa? This wasn't supposed to be so dangerous! Well, don't blame me! How could I know? No one ever told me golems had this type of power! <laughs> Target acquired. Commence elimination. Forgive me, I'm so sorry. Please don't kill me. I was wrong. Stop! Don't do this! <clears throat> Yabashira! Have you completely lost your mind? What in the world do you think you're doing? Take a minute and think about Somali. You really want her to see you behaving like this? Yabashira! Eliminating target. Somali, no! You've got to move away from her! I'm gonna stay right here! Please stop all this, Father. I don't want you to hurt anybody. Somali! I'll be okay. Father would never hurt me. Like always, he's just gonna put his hand on my head. Just me, Father. Where am I? Somali. Getting pretty worried. You haven't moved for ages. Tell me, what have I done? You kidding me? You don't remember that big show you put on? The memories are fragmented. Did I cause your injuries? You were involved. But honestly, this is nothing compared to what you went through. Forgive me. So, Father, will your arm ever grow back? No. And does it really hurt a lot? No. I am truly sorry if I frightened you, Somali. Mm. Huh? Mm. Uh, it's yours. I see. Here. Okay, Father. Inventory of damage. Left arm and 23% of skin has been lost. Significant reduction of internal fluids. 
daily life functionality has been reduced to 76%. Time remaining is... Time remaining is... unknown. Catch it, Somali! It's coming your way! I got it! It's all wiggly! It's trying to escape, but I won't let it! <laughs> uh, you okay? I am fine. You shouldn't push it. You're still recovering. Why don't you take a break and rest? It is not an issue. I am inconvenienced, but I will soon adjust to my reduced mobility. Father! Yabashira! We caught a whole lot of fish! Hey! That's some good work there! Here's our catch down the hatch. Take it easy, guys. Don't eat so fast. We, we can't, can't help, help it. it. It's, it's so, so good. good. Looks like it. Somali frequently becomes overstimulated in the presence of food. I have encouraged her to exercise restraint, but she does not. Uh -huh. I see. She has a blockage. Here, drink some water. <sighs> that's better, thank you. See, that's what happens when you eat too fast. I promise I'll be more careful next time. Shizuna. <laughs> I see. You have noticed? It's pretty clear. So tell me, how's your condition progressing? Has it been getting worse? Since the confrontation to rescue Somali, I have noticed irregularities in my hearing and vision. This may be a result of damage suffered to my internal systems. I feel more frequent limitations to my movement as well. As the rate of this deterioration increases, I will eventually cease functioning. I see. But still, there must be something we can do to help you. That is, you still have time left, right? It is unclear. Oh. From the time I left my forest, I have struggled in many ways against the natural order. I took this action of my own will for the sake of remaining with Somali. However, the time is rapidly approaching when I must leave her. There are things happening that I cannot fight. Mm. I get it. Mr. Golem, no matter what decision you make, I'll help you in any way I can. I made a promise and I will keep it. However, I do hope you'll think it over again. In the end, what is the best decision you can make for both you and Somali? <sighs> the town's coming up. Somali, pull your hood tight. This looks like a lively place. Welcome to my stand, young lady. Yes, but it has no nutritional value. Look there! A golem! Now that's a rare sight. First time in our town. Enjoy yourselves. Welcome to the Harvest Festival. Right. Forgot it was that time of year. A Harvest Festival? It's a party to thank someone's ancestors, to show you're grateful for a bountiful harvest. Oh! I like parties! Is there cake? Huh? What's everyone holding? Pretty, aren't they? They're called Wind Rider Flowers. What are they doing with them? It's a special part of the festival. We use them to greet the souls of our ancestors. What's a soul? Hmm. 
Well, it's kind of like a ghost. What? That's bad. I don't like ghosts one bit. <laughs> don't worry. Ghosts are nothing to be afraid of. They're just the souls of our ancestors. That's right. They're the essence of our departed families and friends. Look over there. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect breeze. If a Windrider flower flies just right, the light it gives out is so intense it can easily be seen across many dimensions, guiding the spirits back to us. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Did you know about that, Father? It is an incomprehensible practice. All creatures become part of the Earth upon their deaths. There are no ghosts to return to this plane. That is the natural order which cannot be changed. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Grandpa! Huh? Hello, Chi. What is it? Can you come? There's a toy I want you to buy me. You yep. have to hurry. Oh, I guess I don't have much choice. It's a special day and I can't say no to my grandson. Thanks, Grandpa. They only have one left. I'm sure that my time's coming. I expect it will be sooner rather than later. But you know something, Mr. Golem. Around here we all believe in the same thing. And our beliefs give us comfort till the end. After death, our souls are released. Released to come back and find the love and warmth of our dear families. Your beliefs sound like wishes. And wishes are pointless. Wow, this looks super good. We'll take one of those, please. You got it. Father, how come you're letting me have all these sweets today? Because of the festival. It is a special day. Wow, festivals are so cool! Is there anything else you wish to have? Meat, perhaps, or candy? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> How come you're so overprotective? Am I? Sure are. Well, looks like somebody got a tasty treat, huh? Hmm. Father got it for me, so it's okay. Watch mm. yourself. If you load up on that stuff, your teeth will rot, and we'll have to pull them all out. <laughs> wow. wow! Now there's something you don't see every day. <laughs> That's great! How did he do that? You can't see, Somali? Here we go. Oopsie daisy. Can you see now? Yeah. Thanks a lot, Yamashira. Hey, pick me up too. Oh, please. In case you didn't notice, you're an adult. A short adult? <laughs> wow, this is so cool. What's wrong? Father's not there. <laughs> huh? That's really strange. You'd think we would see him as big as he is. Mr. Golem, I guess you didn't change your mind. Huh? What are you talking about? He's gone away, and I don't think he's ever going to come back. <laughs> Is that supposed to be some kind of joke? Because it's not funny. He's been agonizing for a while over how to use the time he has left. Oh, come on. You can't tell me he would just run off somewhere and leave her. I tried to talk him out of it, but he wouldn't. <laughs> hey! Father! Where are you? Father! Father! Where are you, 
Somali. I found you, Father! Stop. Uh? I forbid you to come any closer. Why would you say that? There is something you have to understand. I can no longer continue on this journey with you. Uh, tell me why. Is it because I ate all that candy back at the carnival? No. Then is it because I play around each day and don't listen when you tell me things? No. Well then, is it because you decided you don't like me anymore? It is not. Why are you doing this? <laughs> it's not fair! I don't want you to go away! Father, you promised me! Don't you remember? You promised you'd never leave! Stop Did it, you so Molly. You said or were you Let go of me. You gotta stay with me forever, just like you promised! Even after this journey, even when I grow up! You said you'd stay with me! You said! Somali! Since the events of the last few days, I have thought about this carefully. If I were to lose control again, I might very well place you in danger. That is why it is better for you if we part ways now. I don't care about that, Father! That's not even what's important! It's just, if you go, then I'll be real lonely without you! Won't you be real lonely without me? Golems have no emotions. I can prove it! You get all upset when I go missing the minute you look away. Every time I'm playing too rough, you get worried that I'll hurt myself. And if I catch a cold, you stay up to look after me. Sometimes you act really strict because you don't want me doing things that are dangerous. When I sleep, you stay by my side because you don't want me to get lonely and wake up all scared. You always hold my hand, so that I never ever get lost. You wouldn't do any of that, if you didn't have feelings for me. And I know you better than anybody in the whole world. I know you're really nice. I know you. I know because... Because you're my father. I have come to understand that I, too, have emotions, and I have a heart. So, Molly. Oh. Yes, Father? I thought I... I want... Even if I must struggle against the natural order of this world, I wish to remain with you, Somali, as your father. Father... That is what I desire. That is my one and only wish, Somali. Together forever. I will stay with you every minute that I can. Even if I am reduced to a soul, I will stay with you. For all eternity.
Biển khơi tình mặn mãi, 